Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. The EMU Eagles and the NIU Huskies. There you have Tremaine Riley and Tim Connor deep for Eastern Michigan. Chris Nendick going to kick it away. Big crowd here for homecoming on a gorgeous but windy Saturday afternoon. David Kaplan and Tom Waddle with you. And the kick is in the air, and it is going to go through the back of the end zone. EMU will go on the attack, led by their quarterback, Matt Bonet, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Take a look at our keys to today's ball game, Tommy Waddle. Pretty simple. Pound the rock with Garrett Wolf. Last time these two teams got together, Wolf ran for 325 yards. Northern has a decided advantage with their offensive line against the Eastern defensive line. Exploit the smaller Eastern Michigan corners with the six foot four Sam Hurd and pressure that guy right there, Matt Bonet, who's suffering with a leg injury. Get to him and force some turnovers today. First and 10 and they're gonna hand it off and it will not go very far. Dwayne Harrison, who is a freshman tailback, true freshman tailback, 5'9", 195, Knocked down around the 22-23 yard line. Let's take a look at the starters. Connor Bennett, Montemayor, Delorier, and Travis Lewis. The skill position players, Minor, Walton, Romelli, Thomas, and Ford. The big men across the front. It's a second and seven. They'll give him three on the first down run. Empty backfield. Bonet looks, throws, football knocked loose, and they are going to say incomplete bringing up a third and seven. Jason Hutton was the man who rumbled in there as Montemayor tried to make a play. Yeah, this Eastern offense is going to try and spread you out, run some no huddle, take advantage of creating some seams with that spread offense. I'm not sure that Bonet is going to be as agile and elusive back there as he has been in the past with the leg injury. And he's got a whole lot of youth around him, a couple of freshman tailbacks our Applebee starters. Third and seven situation. Bonet looks, 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 has time, throws. It's complete but far short of a first down and Eastern Michigan is gonna be forced to punt as Keenan Blaylark rumbled in and made the tackle. So Northern Illinois will get the football for the first time. Definitely not what Eastern wanted to do. Again, they want to control the clock, establish their running game, and try to keep this Northern offense off the field as much as possible, and they go three and out right off the bat. Andrew Wellick in the punt. Let's go to our third member of our crew, Casey Kaler, with an update on the NIU defense. Casey? Thanks so much, Cap. Uh, as you mentioned, three and out for that NIU uh, defensive unit. I talked with Joe Novak and Denny Dornbos both yesterday, and while pleased with the defense's improved play against Miami, back a couple of Wednesdays ago. They said by no means are they content. They're not kidding themselves. They need to get a lot better defensively, especially in the takeaway department, where there's still a minus eight, but it's a positive start with that three and out. Also, one other note, injury note, one of the young freshman linebackers that got a lot of playing time in the win over Miami, Tim McKnight, I should say McCarthy, he uh, will not be playing here today. Low back problem, but he should be back next week. All right, Casey. Keenan Blaylock, the man who's replacing him. Let's look at the Applebee's offensive starters. There's the man, Garrett Wolf. Britt Davis, they call him Little Vic around DeKalb. He plays a lot like Michael Vick. He's a future quarterback. Jake Nordine, Sam Hurd, and Chatone Powers. Very good skill position players. And then a great O-line. Free, Lewick, Van Acker, Ivanok, and Bros. A big group of hogs, they like to call them, Tommy. These guys are huge. Ton of skill out on the outside, great running backs, Phil Horvath. I didn't talk about him off the top of the show, but 72% completion rate. Only one quarterback in Division I football has a higher completion rate. Touchdowns to interception ratio is fantastic. 13 TDs just to, to just five picks. Garrett Wolf, we talked about him. AJ Harris will get some carries. Sam Hurd really blossoming as their go-to wide receiver. And that offensive line is very big very experienced and very talented. And Eastern committing a penalty right off the bat. Again, not the way they wanted to get started. Giving this explosive Husky offense the ball in their territory. Take a look at the Applebee starters for Eastern Michigan. Olivier Gagnon Gordillo. Good work. Josh Hunt, I'm leaving it to you the rest of the way. Josh Hunt among the 
big guys for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. A handoff to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf already rips off a nice run. Eight yard gain, a second to two situation. Right from the get go, an illegal touching penalty, I believe, was what the call was that moved this ball for the Huskies off of that punt. Well, despite his slight nature, Garrett Wolf, 5'7", 177, you're not going to bring him down with an arm tackle. Does a great job running between his offensive tackles. Also has the speed to get outside, but this kid has got tremendous vision. Second down situation for Phil Horvath and company. Hand off again, Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf turns the corner. Garrett Wolf. Knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. So right away, what the Huskies wanted to have happen is working very well. Tommy Waddles is a nightmare revisited for that Eastern Michigan front seven. Garrett Wolf last year ran for 325 yards. This is just get a hat on a hat, get some help from Chateau Powers on the outside. Sam Hurd will pick up a bit of a block. I thought Chateau Powers made a heck of a block for that play. These receivers here in DeKalb will not only catch a football, but they'll... They'll throw a block for their talented running backs. Horvath fakes, looks, pressured, throws, and it is intercepted. Intercepted at the 14-yard line. Looked like a poor decision on the throw, Tom. Just missed his man. Yeah, he threw it into double coverage, trying to sneak it into the tight end. And that's the type of big play Eastern was looking for. Take a look at the replay. Yeah, he's rushed. Trying to get the ball into Jake Nordine. A great, great interception. Good athleticism from, I believe it's Daniel Holtzclaw. is a true freshman back there. Holtzclaw did a real nice job. There was a bit of a seam, but you're right. That was a tough throw to try and make. Yeah, they had to try to double. A difficult throw to squeeze in there. So Eastern Michigan gets the football back. Their second possession. They went three and out the first time. Bonet playing again if you're just joining us with a banged up leg. That play would go absolutely nowhere. Bonet was hit on the shin last week at Toledo with a helmet. He said he went one play, thought I'm okay, and then realized, oh my God, I'm in a lot of pain. Was out from some portion of the second quarter, early second quarter, till late third quarter, and then was able to get back into the game, but really was not very effective. Yeah, he was limping all throughout pregame, and this is an offense that doesn't give you a whole lot of time to rest. You go no huddle, and they're going to ask him to do a whole lot. I don't believe Northern is really going to respect him running the football today, so they'll key on him as a thrower. Hand off to Harrison, and he is knocked down just over the 20-yard line. Dwayne Harrison again 5'9 Tom very tough when you go up against a big physical defensive line yeah this is an attack 4-3 they call it here at Northern this defense created a lot of turnovers last year as you see Dwayne Harrison's number there very young defensive crew they have not made a lot of big plays so far this year just one interception and just four sacks on the season so far four quarterback hurries I know Coach Joe Novak wants to see more out of his defense the third and four situation. Bonet looks, looks for Delorier, and it is knocked down at the line. Delorier was the man he was looking for. Kenny West got the big paw up to knock it down. Second punt of the day for Andrew Wellick coming up. He's a junior. He also see, handles their place kicking duty. Yeah, you see right there. Kenny West does a good job using his hands to get the offensive tackle off of him up in the air to block the pass. High snap, Wellick catches it. It's a very low driving kick, knocked out of bounds at the 44-45 yard line. So again, good field position for Northern Illinois. Very stiff wind here today. Very difficult to punt into wind like this. And as a punt returner, you have to secure the catch and not really be as concerned on a day like today. And the big returns just control the football. And you look at that record, 49 and 58. Keep in mind, folks, when he started here, it was so buried, they went through a 23-game losing streak. Take that away. It's amazing what he has now, done. Now they're amazing. Looking, looking for their sixth consecutive winning season. Horvath. Wide receiver screen to Britt Davis, who can fly. Britt Davis up the sideline, knocked out of bounds. I think this That's is a 43. Going to come back and may have Chateau Powers on an illegal block. 
Just a little bubble screen. As you said, getting the ball to Britt Davis, who is very dangerous. And you'll see a hold right there. Good call. Looked like Chateau Powers had a little bit too much of the defensive back. 10-yard penalty, still first down. 10-yard penalty, and they'll get, as you said, Chateau Powers on the penalty. They've got such great athletes at the skill positions here that they want to get the ball to them as quickly as possible and see what they can do with that very important run-after-the-catch statistic. As you see, Phil Horvath uncharacteristically made a bad decision in the last drive. Second, uh, first down and 14. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. Horvath gives to Garrett Wolf. Wolf turns the corner. Wolf knocked down at the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of four. Bring up a second and 10. Garrett Wolf off to a very good start. We've always marveled at how durable this young man is. I talked about how small he is. Weighs less than 180 pounds, but has consistently carried it 30, 35 times a game and really been injury-free over the course of his young career. Horvath looks, looks, throws, finds Britt Davis. Britt Davis dances, knocked down at the 49-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Bring up about third and three and a half, three and third and four. Once again, just trying to get the ball into a playmaker's hands quickly. Horvath, the quick out to Britt Davis, and they've done a good job here, first and second down. Getting some of that yardage back that they lost, they leave themselves with a third and very a, manageable a make -a four. Right, a makeable situation. Northern's won four in a row over Eastern Michigan. 2000, the last EMU win over the NIU Huskies. Horvath barks out the signal, single back set. That's all you'll ever see out of the Huskies. Give to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf turns the corner. Garrett Wolf is gone. Garrett Wolf down the sideline. Garrett Wolf to the end zone. He's knocked out of bounds at the one yard line. Ball carry. Call it the two. Outstanding running out of the little Wolf guy. Garrett Wolf. Don't have to give him much of a seam. And when he finds a little alley, He's getting through there quick, and he is finding his way deep into the Eastern Michigan secondary. As you see that, he's getting help from Jake Nordeen out there, his big tight end, John Bross. His offensive tackle, and right now he's just trying to find a pylon, steps out about the one-yard line. But Keep you in see, mind, Tommy, a year ago, 325 yards against the DMU team on 43 carries. First and goal situation, just outside the one. Garrett Wolf takes it. And I believe he's down just short of the goal line. They'll spot it inside the one and bring up a second goal situation. He's done so much work, you got to give him the TD, Absolutely. don't you? They got A.J. Harris on the sideline at 6'1 and 223. He's the senior. Much bigger, a little more powerful, but Garrett's done the, the hard work to this point. You might as well give him a chance to get in the end zone. Garrett Wolf again, the single back set. Horvath barks out the signals. Gives it to Garrett Wolf, and he is into the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Garrett Wolf finds Pater with 8.58 left. First quarter, the Huskies. A PAT away from a 7-0 lead, Tommy. Real good blocking. Up front, Brian Van Acker, the center. Ben Lewis, your guard. Jason Ebenacher, guard. Just creating a little seam for a little man. He gets into the end zone. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year. Then Nick Perfect with the PAT, and it is 7 nothing. Six carries, 77 yards, and a touch for Garrett Wolf. Could be another big day for the young man. We'll take a timeout and come back. Could be a huge day. Don't go anywhere. It's homecoming into Cal on Comcast Sports. What makes a butter burger better? Well, it's cooked up fresh and made to order. So good. Hot and juicy. Rushed right to you. So good. You can taste how much we care. Oh, that's luscious. So good. Lightly buttered. Tasty. Toasted bun. So good. Bigger, better butter burger. Colors. Taste how much we care.
2006 Nissan Altima with a special edition package. People are really drawn to it. They love the eight-way power driver's seat, dual illuminated vanity mirrors, and steering wheel mounted audio controls. 15 added features in all. Now with package savings and cash back, save $1,700. The Nissan Altima with a special edition package. It's very attractive. Welcome back to DeKalb, Illinois. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle, Casey Kaler with you. And here's Garrett Wolf. He did the heavy lifting, as Tom said, all the way down the field. And now he gets rewarded with the one-yard plunge for the touchdown. He's carried it six times here so far today. And he's got 77 yards on the ground, a touchdown. Do the math. Okay, it's a 60-minute game, right? We've played six minutes. So if he continues this pace, he's going to rush for 770 yards this afternoon. It's a big day. That yeah, is a big day. Twice the day he had, more than twice the day he had last year against the same Eastern Michigan football team. But this was a, a, you know, a prototypical Northern Illinois drive. Some touch passes. Get the ball to your top offensive threat, Garrett Wolf, and you get seven points. Another deep kick, and this one again out of the back of the end zone. Keep in mind there. There's a strong yeah. leg on the young man, Chris Nendick, but there's also a gale force wind that's blowing our game notes I was, all yeah. over the booth. I was going to say, I think you probably could kick it through the end zone yourself today. Hey, no, but you I, were a kicker in college. I was a kicker, exactly. <laughs> Gorgeous conditions, a huge crowd. I mean, it is a sea of Husky Red here. Matt Bonet and company go back to work, trailing by seven, number 11. The left-handed quarterback, Wayne Harrison, the man in the backfield, single back set for Eastern Michigan. Hand off to Harrison. Harrison breaks a couple of tackles and belted down at the 27. Pretty good run from the young man. Finds a little seam. Watch Get a hit out. at the end. Well, he shakes Ray Smith right there. Strong safety, Ray Smith, exposes himself a little bit. As he gets a little older, he'll, uh, he'll learn how to protect himself a little better. Go to the hole. Josh Allen, though. Head on a Two. swivel. Wow. Second down situation. Bonet, hands again to Harrison. He got you. He got me. Bonet kept it. I thought Harrison had it. Bonet, unable to pick up the first down. Bonet faked the out completely. Very disciplined defense. Ken West again making a big play. I'm not expecting Bonet to run the football today a whole lot myself because of that leg injury. That's the guy he wants to throw it to. You Eric just saw him run, a, yeah, run across your screen. Six foot four, 206 uh, pound junior. 17 career touchdowns. He also has a size advantage over these smaller northern corners. Bonet hands it off, and it looks like Harrison's going to be short. I believe he's going to be about a half yard short. We'll see where they spot it. Well, we talked to some of the Eastern Michigan people before the game, and they said if we cannot run the football, it is going to be a long day for us because their goal is to eat up some of the clock, get some first downs, and keep that northern offense off the field. And you see here just a great play by Keenan Blaylock to bring him down short of the first down mark. And it looks like Eastern's going to have to punt once again. They get Tim McCarthy, the freshman middle linebacker, six foot two thirty-five, number fifty-three, is not playing today due to injury. Is expected back a week from today. It's just a young group, four or five, two freshmen playing so far this year defensively. Well, look, another punt. This was a long driving kick. It's the Cone Powers dangerously picks it up and is belted down at the 28-yard line. We'll take a timeout and come back. 6.46 left. Husky 7. Eagles nothing. College football. The Comcast Sports Net. Career stalled? Get on the fast track with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. NIU provides an AACSB accredited MBA at convenient locations and within your budget. Choose from the flexible evening MBA, Saturday executive MBA, or one-year professional MBA that lets you balance the demands of home and work. Take the NIU challenge and jumpstart your career. Call 1-866-NIU-MBA-1. That's 1-866-NIU. Buying a new home? 
then shopping for a mortgage. When you're comparing two good mortgage companies and two good mortgage professionals, how do you choose? The logical decision is to pick the mortgage company that offers the lowest rate and fees. At Guaranteed Rate, our low rates and fees have turned the mortgage industry upside down. We believe lender fees shouldn't be that complicated. That's why we charge one flat fee. It's that simple. We encourage you to check out our website at guaranteedrate.com, where we've pulled back the curtain to reveal for you a true rate and fee comparison of 10 leading lenders. So now you know that you'll receive the lowest combination of rates and fees. And our guarantee is that if we're not the lowest, we'll pay you $500. Call us at 866-934-RATE. That's 866-934-RATE. Guaranteed rate. Lowest rate, guaranteed. The broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Comcast Sportsnet by Northern Illinois University. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written consent Comcast Sportsnet and NIU is strictly prohibited. Jeff Jenick, 12 years at Northwestern as an assistant coach. Second year now as the head man at Eastern Michigan. Garrett Wolf catches the screen pass and he is knocked down. Just short maybe of a first down it looks like. Call it a gain of uh, maybe eight to nine yards to bring up a second and very, very short. I think he has taught his offensive lineman over the course of his young career to continue to block until you hear a whistle because you never know when that young man is going to squeeze through a hole. His legs never stop. Well, last week against Miami, he had one where it looked like he was on top of the pile, bounced off it, and broke the run. He's an amazing little football player at 5'7". I say little, 5'7", 180 pounds. That's very small. A lot of guys out there. Horvath hands it off. This time it's A.J. Harris rumbling across the 50. Gives his man Garrett Wolf a break. And A.J. Harris, much bigger, 6'1", 223, a senior, moves the chains. First and 10 for the Huskies in Eastern Michigan territory. Jeff Jenick, the coach at Eastern, as we were saying, Northwestern ties. He has four members plus a GA, a grad assistant on his staff, all from Northwestern. He'd be wise to throw 13 or 14 defenders out there today to try to slow this northern running attack. A.J. Harris, Scarrett Wolf combined for 2,500 yards rushing last season. Little trickery, Britt Davis looking, looking. Thought about throwing it, keeps it, turns it up the sideline, knocked down at the 40-yard line. Little trickery from Northern Illinois. It's just an incredible weapon to have. Not only is he a guy that can fill in and play quarterback, you see his ability to to run with the football as well in reverses. He's a fine receiver. It's just such a weapon to have. And he does the smart thing. Chaton Powers was not free and clear, so he just touched the ball and makes a positive play, nine yards. Another second and very, very short for Northern Illinois. Horvath, hand off A.J. Harris. A.J. Harris. Knock down around the 33. Let's go to the sidelines. Our man Casey Kaler with a report on the NIU Ola. All right, thanks, Cap. Ben Luke, I talked with the big guy, the big left guard for the NIU Huskies. I said, what are the offensive line keys to this game against Eastern Michigan today? He said, Eastern Michigan defensively up front, very quick. He said, we got to be quick first and physical. And he said, our goal, no quarterback sacks in a big rush game. So far, they're off to a good start. Thank you, Casey. First and 10 at the 33. Horvath to the throw. Horvath looking, goes downfield, incomplete. But was looking for his tight end, the big man, Jake Nordeen. Actually, Phil, a little impatient there, a little post-corner route, actually, from Sam Hurd. And if he just waits, he's got the time. His offensive line has given him a pocket. And Sam Hurd comes out of his break a little bit slow. It just looked like Phil Horvath rushed his throw a little bit. Tough to throw a corner route into the boundary. Second down at 10. A.J. Harris again, and he's tripped up. Had a hole to go through, Tommy, but real nice tackle. Olivier Gagnon Gordillo. Good work. They're not real big up front for Eastern Michigan, but they've got great speed. You'll see Gagnon Gordillo coming from just his right defensive end position. 
got a hand in there. Got a hand in there. You're absolutely right. But this offensive line of Northern should be able to maul this Eagle front four at the line of scrimmage. Horvath looking, looking, throws. And he finds Chacon Powers very close to a first down. Should be a Northern Illinois first down. It'll be very, very close. Veteran move by the senior wide receiver, Chaton Powers, just runs a nice curl route. Once again, Phil Horvath giving plenty of time to throw the ball, and Powers, after he catches it, does not run backwards. He turns, his dips his shoulder, realizes where the first down marker is, does a fine job converting that third down. And he does move the chains. First and 10 now at the EMU 22-yard line. Horvath to A.J. Harris. A.J. Harris will rip off a chunk of five yards, bring up a second and five. So A.J. Daniel getting a full complement of plays here and a chance to show what he can do. Both of these running backs are, have such great football smarts, and I think that offensive line has a good feel for their backs as well. They allow things to develop. Brian Van Acker is a three-year starter at center, very athletic, leads them, pulling in, in several instances, right and left, but these backs just do a great job finding holes and hitting those holes quickly. Horvath looking, looking, throws, and finds Chateau Powers complete. Horvath to Powers. Powers knocked down at the 11-yard line. Moves the chains. First down, Northern Illinois. Another good draw to Phil Horvath. Yeah, they're doing a great job of softening up that Eastern defense. Again, just a controlled passing attack. A little half roll. He finds Chaton Powers in the quick out. And before you know it, those safeties, those corners are going to jump up and try to crowd the line of scrimmage. And both Powers and Sam Hurd are going to get some behind somebody today. What do you think chances are Garrett Wolf touches it right here? Pretty good. There's the handoff. Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf knocked down about the seven-yard line. It looked like he had Wolf. a little more daylight there, and it closed quickly. Tackled by Blake Smith. Blake Smith came in and made the play. His 770-yard rushing day, the pace has slowed a bit. So I think he's down to about 500. He's on pace to run for 500 today. What is today. the NCAA record? Somewhere in the high 300. I, I would think that Garrett Wolf got a shot. Sniffed it last year against these Eastern Michigan Eagles at 325. Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf tries to turn the corner. Garrett Wolf dragged down. He'll lose a yard on the play. It'll bring up a third and seven situation. Kevin Howell. Kevin Howell made a real nice play. Yes, he did. Very athletic. Casey talked about it a few minutes ago down on the, the sidelines. This front four from East are not real big, but they're very quick. They've combined for nine sacks and a ton of tackles for losses this year. Just a great play, Kevin Howell, shedding a block. Yeah, George Daglas had him and just couldn't corral him. Yeah, that's a tough man to bring down in a one-on-one -on -one situation as well. To Tone Powers, man in motion. Single back set is A.J. Harris. Horvath rolls. Horvath looking, looking, throws, and it's knocked away. Very, very dangerous pass. There were a number of white shirts around. It's a very difficult route to run. Well, you have your slot receiver trying to run a quick out. As you'll see, just a, a half roll. Chaton Powers is running the out. And at the top of the screen, you see Britt Davis try to clear things out. There's not a whole lot of room to clear things out. A great play right there by Stephen Lewis to come up and tip it away. And it looked like Britt Davis was open in the back of the end zone. Yeah. Chris, well, well defended by Eastern Michigan. Chris Nendick, very reliable kicker. And has it blocked. And flags fly. Well, Phil Horvath had the football in his hands with a knee down. Foul, Looked like he got... Number 33 on the defense. Wow. After this is going to go, automatic first down. We'll stay right here. Automatic first down. Did Horvath get tackled? I think he got mauled. That's what I thought. Let's take a look at the replay. And I thought a, a paw got in there and got the kick. Here comes Nendick. 
Oh, he didn't ever, he never, he never swung and got it. There's the face mask right there. Wow, Kick what was a block. Break. Nendek never, never was able to put a foot on the ball. So the Huskies get a huge break. A.J. Harris knocked down inside the five. Ball carried by Harris. Boy, I'd like, can we get a look one more time at that kick because it looks Brody almost like Chris Nendick stumbled Bordeaux. into his, his approach. Yeah, I saw him come through. Let's take a look again. There's the placement. Everything looks fine. And then it looks like Horvat didn't get the ball down. It's like they had trouble spotting the ball. And then Phil takes one for the team and takes a personal foul face mask. Second down for the Huskies. Second and goal at the four yard line. AJ Harris walks in, get it six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Touchdown run made by 24 AJ Harris for four. Pretty yards. simple there. I think I could have gotten through that hole. I don't know about that. You may. That was. You wouldn't have had the speed or the agility. I don't believe. Drive a truck through that one. Let's see if they can execute this extra point. Huskies, they convert a huge break. 13 seconds left first quarter. We'll be right back with the cap. My wife works hard. The kids are 10, 6, and 3. Our life together gets a little crazy. So I called Applebee's like I've done before. They brought our favorite foods out to my car door. With Applebee's car side to go, you call it in, we bring it out. Now my wife wants to meet me just as fast as she can Cause there's something women like about a pickup man Applebee's car side to go It's not fast food, it's Applebee's food fast Sparta Cat ATVs come with 12 inches of ground clearance And our exclusive speed rack system And since they're so indestructible They also come with a three-year warranty. Even the accessories. Articat. More to go on. Welcome back to Husky Stadium, Brigham Field. David Kaplan and Tom Waddle with you. We are having a good time here playing catch with all of our notes blowing <laughs> around the booth. Looks like the Huskies are having a good time running the football today as well as you see A.J. Harris getting in for the second score of the day. Again, Eastern Michigan commits a penalty that allows Northern to bring it in for a seven, but it uh, could be a long day for this Eagle defense if they don't find a way to slow down the, the rushing attack of Northern Illinois. Nendick's kick goes out of bounds. So Eastern Michigan will get it at the 35. Last two kicks he had went through the back of the end zone. Let's take a look at our North Aurora. Get you our scoring drive in just a moment. First downs in the ball game. It's hard to NIU 7 to 0 over EMU. Hard to bring you anything with this Eastern Michigan offense. They just come right off the field and start playing ball. And they've gone to Tyler yep. Jones. Tyler Jones, who is a freshman, obviously the leg problem is causing a big issue for Matt Bonet. Number eight, Tyler Jones is now in at quarterback. The quarter has come to an end. We will take a timeout. We'll come back. Tell you how the Huskies took the lead 14-0. It's coming up on Comcast Sports Day. There are two things we'd like you to help us with. Anna and I retired by 60, and the family is taken care of, no matter what. You're definitely on the right track. I looked at the family though. For more than 145 years, Northwestern Mutual and its products have quietly earned a most enviable reputation. Isn't it time you had a quiet conversation of your own? Northwestern Mutual Financial Network, the quiet company. Have a quiet conversation of your own with the Efner Financial Group. The verdict is in. The College of Law at Northern Illinois University is one of the nation's most respected law schools. At NIU Law, top students are part of a tight-knit, dynamic, and diverse learning community.
small classes give them unmatched access to some of the best legal scholars in the country, and state-of-the-art technology prepares them for today's courtrooms. Many NIU law students even get hands-on legal practice before they graduate. That's why so many successful lawyers and judges hold degrees from the NIU College of Law. NIU Law. Discover the difference. MP3 player, phone, the slider remix from Kia Sera. The power of music everywhere you take your phone. Projected from the nexus, but when a West is, never stress it. With the essence of expression, it's that sexy intro. Welcome back to DeKalb, Illinois. 14 nothing Huskies over Eagles. As we start the second quarter, there is the North Aurora Auto Mall. Husky scoring drive. Harris, the four-yard TD run, 14 plays, 72 yards, the big play, obviously. The penalty on the botched field goal that gave Northern Illinois another first down. They don't down to Casey Kaler. He's got a special guest. Casey? I sure do. It's homecoming, as you've said, here at NIU. I'm pretty sure I'm with the biggest man on campus, Hollis Thomas, former NIU Husky, back uh, Philadelphia with a bye week. He's in his 10th season with the Eagles. What's it like to be back in DeKalb? Uh, different. Uh, a lot of this stuff around here was not up when I left. Uh, I think I got lost for like the first time ever that I've been here. Uh, but it's, it's great that uh, they're building things up around there. You mentioned you hadn't been back in uh, 10 years, so 10 years in between bye weeks for the Eagles brings you back here to uh, Northern Illinois. Well, actually, you know, I came back my first year because the bye week fell on homecoming weekend. And, you know, I don't want to be that, that old guy up at, uh, up at the school, you know, without, without other old people up here. So, you know, you try to pick a homecoming weekend, and, you know, this one happened to fall on, the, on our bye week. So and I was able to get up here and, you know, just join some of the festivities. A lot of people might remember the hit you had on Michael Vick in the NFC Championship game. Thought you might have broke him in half uh, last January. Yeah, you know, uh, I, think, I think everybody uh, waits wait for that moment when they could, uh, you know, stop, stop the other team and, you know, put their team on top of it. On top of the two balls. Real quickly, T.O. and uh, McNabb, as they kissed and made up? Uh, most definitely. I mean, I, I know you saw the games and stuff. Uh, they they have kissed and made up. Uh, it, was, it wasn't the biggest fight as everybody made it out to be uh, in, the me in the media. I think the media had more fun with it than we did. Thanks, Alex. No problem. Back to you. <laughs> I like that. Hollis Thomas. I'm not sure the Eagles, Eagles wanted that week off after getting pounded by the Dallas Cowboys. I think they might want to go back. Going back out there and kind of get that bad play shot in there. That play goes absolutely nowhere. A change at quarterback, as we were starting to tell you when the quarter ended. Matt Bonet's leg is yeah. obviously bothering him. It's Tyler Jones, a 6'1 redshirt freshman, 213 pounds, was a basketball, football standout in high school in Belleville, Michigan. He is the man now, very mobile. Yeah, and you have to be mobile to run this offense. Folks here locally in this area that you've seen Northwestern running for years. You gotta have a quarterback that can tuck it and run. And obviously Matt Bonet and that leg injury not allowing him to be a threat running the football today. It's a third and nine situation. Tyler Jones rolling, rolling, pressured, throws it out of bounds. And he is belted as he let it go. Kenny West, number 34. The man with the pressure. No sacks so far in 05, but last year was their best pass rusher with eight sacks. He's been all over the field so far today. Wolf and Harris today, 114 yards and two touchdowns. Garrett Wolf came into today's game with 703 yards rushing, and I think still he has an outside shot of getting to 1,000 yards on the season. 297 would do it for him, and that would make the seventh consecutive year here in DeKalb where a Northern Illinois running back has rushed for 1,000 yards. That's quite an accomplishment for Joe Novak's program, which it will happen, just a matter of what. Another punt. This is a long punt. A dangerous catch again by Chaton Powers. Well, I'm not so sure Chaton didn't think that ball hit Bradley Pruitt. And if he thought it hit Pruitt, he made a good decision. Boy, I don't know about that one. That goes off your hands in this win, and you're giving up a touchdown. Well, you thought they kicked the ball a few plays back, so I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> Again, I, my, my only explanation for, for that decision is if he thought Bradley Pruitt, who was downfield, 
the ball had actually glanced off of him. And if that was the case, secure the football. Take a look at our first quarter stats, Mid-American Conference football today here in DeKalb, Illinois. You saw a quick look at some of the numbers. Huskies first and 10 at their own nine yard line. Horvath tosses to Garrett Wolf, cuts back and knocked down just Garrett over the Wolf. 10. Another look at our statistics, Tommy, from quarter number one. That's exactly what Northern set out to do today, run the football, control the clock. They've had it for over nine and a half minutes so far. 123 yards rushing. The one turnover, despite the turnover, still with a 14-point lead. Look at the Husky running game. This is what got the job done for him. There's Garrett Wolf on a big run, knocked out at the two, and then he finishes the deal right there with a touchdown. And A.J. Harris also a big, big first quarter. As we go back to live action, Sam Hurd makes the catch, and he is going to be knocked down just short of the 20-yard line, enough for a Northern Illinois first down. It's just a matter of time. You see Sam Hurd's numbers on the season. It's over 16 yards per catch and eight touchdowns. Truly a big play receiver. And if they continue to effectively run the ball, Northern that is, they're going to have to drop a safety. Eastern Michigan's going to have to bring an extra guy in the tackle box to support that run. And they're going to get someone behind them in the second base. Garrett Wolf, Garrett Wolf across the 25-yard line out here, the 27-yard line. Rips off another good chunk of yardage. You know, Thomas, Hollis Thomas was saying he got lost coming into DeKalb. But we do have a penalty flag holding on the Huskies. They're going to get, I believe, Jake Nordine on that hold. Garrett Wolf wants to know what happened. What you do, my man? But Hollis Thomas was saying he got lost for the first time ever coming into the town because it's not what you would call the size of Chicago. Well, they made the great progress. So much going on here. President John Peters and his staff have done a wonderful job. Jim Phillips is just a tremendous athletic director, and things are really looking up in the town. The toss from Horvath to Garrett Wolf. <laughs> A quick little screen pass, first and 20. I think Garrett Wolf beat his offensive lineman out there to the play. Unfortunately, the play didn't develop the way they wanted it. They'll call it a gain of six, and it'll bring up a second and 14. Clock dripping under 11.30. Again, they, they do a great job, offensive coordinator John Bond. When they find themselves in first and really long, just taking steps to try to get a few yards on first and second down and leave them with a manageable third down. And off to Garrett Wolf. This play really goes nowhere. Wolf, you see him trying to pick his holes and see if he can bounce it outside. But Eastern Michigan, after some early troubles against Garrett Wolf, does a much better job here at stringing it out and then making the play. I have to tell you, Kevin Howe's been very impressive. Just 250 pounds at the defensive end position, but they're doing a nice job shedding the blocks and bringing Garrett Wolf down in one-on-one -on -one situations. Very difficult for a man his size to do. Yep, number 88. Horvath looking, looking on third and long, looking, still looking, and he is going to go down. That's what we call a coverage set. Outstanding coverage Bill Horvath by the EMU secondary. The going to force Northern Illinois Kevin Howell with the quarterback to give the football the up. And with Horvath in the pocket, had he thrown it away, it would have been grounding. He's got all day to throw. You see, he makes the decision not to throw it there to Sam Hurd. There's you see Sam Hurd. Hurd. He's just not going to get a first and down. So Horvath decides not to throw it to him. Riley is right, why put it up? Eagles. Your man's not going to be able to do anything with it. And third and 14 is going to turn into fourth and 10. Andy Ditbenner, 6'1", 192 pound freshman. Now he's forced to punt Still into the win in Eastern Michigan. We'll have excellent field position when we return. 14 nothing Huskies in the camp. Time to take five, Casey's will be there. Time to take five, you got what you need. Right now, pick up any large, made from scratch, single topping pizza for $9.99 or any two for $17.99 and get a free can of pop with the purchase of any Deli Express Chuck Wagon or Big Chuck Sandwich. Your convenience store and a whole lot more. Yeah, there's so much more. Time to take five. 
case of general store. You know, with most wireless companies, you don't just get charged for calls you make on your cell phone. You also get charged for calls you receive. Did you just make that face? That, huh? You mean get off? What? I didn't know that face. Well, at U.S. Cellular, you don't get charged for incoming calls. Did you just make that other face? That, I think I'm going to switch face. With unlimited call me minutes, there's no charge for incoming calls. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Right now, get unlimited local call me minutes on plans $39.95 and higher. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle with you here in DeKalb, Illinois. Casey Kaler roaming the sidelines. Take a look at Joe Novak's record. Look at that. 1 and 10, 0 oh and 11, 2 and 9 as he tries to rebuild a very downtrodden football program. And then he turns it. 5 and 6, 6 and 5, 6 and 5, 8 and 4, 10 and 2. And of course, a bowl appearance last year. They're off to a solid start this year with a very, very challenging schedule. Bonet back in at quarterback. Looking, looking to left, he throws, and he throws short. He it just, was intended for Tim Connor. But this doesn't look right. No, he does not. He just, you know, I give the kid a lot of credit for playing injured, but when you're so injured, you cannot execute what they're asking you to do from this position, and the quarterback has a lot of responsibilities in this offense. If you can't set your feet and throw it or tuck it and run it, he's hurting his ball club. Bonet looks over to the sidelines, now makes a decision. He's rushed, but sets up a screen. Connor knocked down at the 30-yard line. Connor, a 5'10", 185-pound freshman. They go with two true freshmen, Tommy, in the backfield. They do a great job setting up the screen pass. Ken West, who's been coming after Bonet all day long, almost gets the tip. But Connor with a, a lot of room to run, and you see right there, Deion Smith with a nice open field tackler. That one could have found its way into the end zone. First and 10 now at the 30-yard line of the Northern Illinois Huskies, who have a 14-0 lead. Tyler Jones now back in at quarterback, and he's going to keep it. He makes one man miss makes another man miss and then drags a gang of tacklers inside the 25 yard line. Well, Ken West fired his gun again there and came up empty. Nice athletic play by Tyler Jones as you'll see just a little bit of a, a delay quarterback keeper and Ken West has him pinned and Tyler Jones a nice job spinning away but once again the defense nice job pursuing. Kyler Jones definitely more of a threat to run the football in this Eastern Michigan offense. Hands it off again to Connor, and that one goes absolutely nowhere. Absolutely nothing. Craig Rush, who is a backup lineman, getting his chance, snip that play out quickly. There's a man just playing his disciplined role. They try to get you to, to bear down on the quarterback, but Rush decides to stay at home and comes up with a big play. On a third and seven situation. Big play for Eastern Michigan to keep the drive alive. Jones going up top. Goes long, nearly intercepted. Nearly intercepted. Alva Hansbro, the man in coverage. Dustin Uchik was there as well, number 35. Little miscommunication here. Travis Lewis runs the short route. Actually slips. He's throwing it to the, the slot receiver. Travis Lewis runs a little smash route. And Tyler Jones, who's probably not getting a whole lot of reps in practice, throws it to a Husky instead of an Eagle. Now, this kick is with the wind. With Andrew an Wellick with an All-American kicker. He is on the Lou Groza Award watch list. Place with perfect. Kick has the distance. It is up. Oh, and it is no good. Doink catches the upright. And so Eastern Michigan is denied. 45-yard field goal goes awry. 
It stays 14-0 Huskies. We'll come back, and they'll be on the attack when we return on Comcast Sports Day. Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at niubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Gansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Before the game, you can shop at either of our two locations, the Home Student Center or the Alumni Shop at the NIU Convocation Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear, selection, and prices, stop by today or shop at home. niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu. Monday. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Tuesdays and Wednesdays just got sexier. Five, seven. Oh, you are mad. Sex in the City. Tuesdays at 8 and Wednesdays at 9 on TBS. Ma'am, I need to see license, registration, and proof of insurance, please. Sir, I need to see license, registration, and proof of insurance, please. License, registration, and proof of insurance, please. I need to see license, registration, and proof of insurance, please. I need to see proof of insurance. Proof of insurance, ma'am. But I need to see some insurance, sir. I need to see proof. 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 Proof of insurance, please. Our best salesmen aren't even on the payroll. 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. We keep you legal for less. So Andrew Wellick, who is an All-American kicker from 45 yards, it's got the distance, and it's fading, and it hits the upright. Young man, 9 of 13 coming in today, and it had plenty of legs. Wow, I mean, that kid's got a strong leg. Very difficult end of the field to be trying a field goal. There's a look at Andrew Wellick. All-time field goal kicking leader in EMU history. He will play on Sundays. I believe you're right. He's, he may, we may have a spot for him oh, down on the light front. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. They haven't been able to find one of those. First to 10 from the 28-yard line now for the Huskies. Garrett Wolf gets the handoff. Garrett Wolf turns the corner. Garrett Wolf is knocked out of bounds. It's one of the best. mark it at the 33-yard line. Yeah, that's one of the best four-yard runs you'll ever see. Just nothing there just being an athlete his acceleration oh, it's incredible he wants to find a, a seam between guard and tackle and it's just not there and he just finds the corner and his speed gets him a, a positive gain we have an injured eastern michigan eagle i talk about how small he is the field but he's got some guns welcome to the gun club he needs one of those shirts Right, the one you wear around can, the office of the radio show. My arms look like little strings hanging out of my shirts, though. Garrett Wolf's actually looks pretty solid out there. Jeremy Perry, six foot, 200 pound senior cornerback, number 27, the man they are helping off the field. We are going to take a timeout. We'll come back to DeKalb time after out. this on Comcast Sportsnet. Every great story starts with a great adventure. Introducing the Nissan Pathfinder, the 270 horsepower engine, three row seating for seven, refined interior with GPS navigation and DVD entertainment, and more off-road capability than ever before. Because you can't talk about the mountaintop unless you actually see the mountaintop. Tell better stories. In the seven passenger, 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Welcome back here to Husky Stadium. Homecoming with me, another one of the distinguished football alumni. Clarence Vaughn has something. In fact, he's got two things that his buddy Hollis Thomas doesn't have. Show him. Two Super Bowl championship rings. 
for the Washington Redskins. Clarence, uh, welcome back to Northern Illinois. You were a member of the 83 team that won the MAC and played in the California Bowl. That was uh, Hollis over there. Uh, what's it like to be back to Northern Illinois? It feels good to be back here in Northern Illinois. Seeing all the improvements here and stuff, I'm just really excited. You know, the team is winning and stuff. Um, Coach Novak was my um, position coach when I came here. And uh, I'm just feeling good. It feels like I've got a lot of pride with the school now. Yeah, I would think so. And exactly how happy are you to see Joe Novak uh, Camp and Waddle were talking up in the booth. You know, he struggled early his first three seasons. Now he's got it turned around. The programs are going great guns. How happy are you for Joe Novak to see that? I'm very happy for him. I know he's always been a champion. Um, um, he's one of the guys that helped me with my character with building when I first got here in Northern. Um, he played under Bill Mallory, who's a great coach, you know, that we know in history. And I'm, I'm glad things turned around for him. He finally got the form and got the right guys in place. He got the right, right coaching staff behind him. And, um, I'm, it's good to see it. It's good. He deserved it. If anything. I have to ask you a question. Anybody that ever played college football and gets to go back to their college for homecoming and gets to come back sporting not one, but two Super Bowl rings, what's it feel like to uh, come back to NIU with two Super Bowl rings? Uh, it's just unbelievable. I'm just, just trying to represent. Alex <laughs> Thomas is jealous over there. You see, you know, you know this Hallis Thomas, he's a uh, new school kid, you know, right? so he has to have that, you know, bling bling. He had to buy his, his, his bling bling. I earned, I earned my bling bling. All right, thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot, man. I'm sorry. All right, Cap, back upstairs. You know, he, his rookie year, he was on a Super Bowl team. He talked about a guy that he said he felt like he died and went to heaven, and I think he did. Thanks, Casey. How many, how many Super Bowl rings do you have? Fourth down, Huskies are set to punt. <laughs> Did they give rings for the few? You wouldn't even got a no, playoff ring. No. I've been in the playoffs. Oh, nearly blocked. Punt will roll out of bounds at the 31-yard line. That's where Eastern Michigan will go on the attack. While we were away at the interview, Huskies went down the field looking for the big play. But there looked like there was some miscommunication between Sam Hurd and Phil Horvath because Sam ran a streak down the left sideline and Horvath threw it much more to the middle of the field. As you see, Jeff Jennick very happy with his defense right now. They're down 14 zip, but they really held this, held this explosive northern offense pretty much in check. Yeah, they've run the football, but they really haven't gotten their passing game on track so far today. Bonet is now back in at quarterback, so both guys getting ample opportunity, and he completes a pass. It'll be very close to a first down. You've got to be careful. You don't want to let a team hang around. That's Northern could have, could have demoralized them early with 14 quick points, and now Bonet back in. It's a little controlled passing game, making positive yardage on first down. It's like they now have... Maybe moving the chains a little bit. By Zach Dwayne Harrison, the man who carried the football. And they're shuttling quarterbacks in and out. Bonet comes out. Tyler Jones goes back in. You may find yourself in a quarterback draw situation, if not a quarterback sneak here. Third and less than a yard. And they will run a quarterback sneak. Tyler Jones and he will well, move the chain. And you may ask, why would you bring Jones in at six foot one and two thirteen in place of Matt Bonet, who's much bigger at who's six four and two thirty? But that's right, he's he's dealing with a leg injury, and the last thing you want is to have your starting quarterback get crushed at the bottom of a pile. You don't want to, him to uh, have to suffer any unnecessary punishment. So good decision by Jeff Jennings. Bonet barks out the signals, hands to Harrison again. Harrison near midfield, so Eastern Michigan now able to get their offense cranked up, the spread formation that they run. Learned at the foot of Randy Walker, the former Miami of Ohio coach who's now doing great work at Northwestern. As you see on a replay, Tommy, Kenny West just unable to make the tackle in the hole. Yeah, they're creating some space up front. And again, you do not want to give this Eastern Michigan team any life at all and think they've got a chance you see northern dominating the rushing statistics but right now eastern michigan has a little something going hand off again to harrison and he's got a big hole 
Turns the corner, knocked down at the 44-yard line. Enough for another. Eagle first down, so they have their best drive of the day going right now. Boy, this was sealed beautifully, yep. and they had Chris a lot Thomas. of running room. Yep, Courtney Ford, just a nice pull, and he gets some help outside with Eric Delorier. And some good speed from the youngster, Dwayne Harrison. Josh Allen, excuse me, Mark Ryder, You're coming in for the tackle. Josh Allen, I think, got caught up in the wash and then got cut at the line. Bonet, I think he was trying to hand that ball off to Tim Connor. I believe this was a handoff to Tim Connor, and they had some miscommunication. The veteran quarterback tucking the ball and getting four yards, but this is exactly what they wanted to do. Little misdirection once again. Snap was a little high. I think the quarter, Matt Bonet just decided that there was too much penetration from the front four of Northern. He made a good decision and didn't risk fumbling the football. Made a nice catch on a bad snap. This is what they wanted to do, control the clock and keep the Huskies offense off the field. Second and eight situation. Bonet fakes, looks, goes down the field, throws, and misses his man. He had a shot at A.J. Bennett, and he missed it. Receiver. Well, you had eight Husky defenders dropping back a three-man route. Again, everything's off of this misdirection, the spread offense, and Bonet just puts a little bit too much air underneath it. Tommy, as a wide receiver, should that ball be caught? You never want to leave your feet too early. It looked like A.J. Bennett didn't run under the football, but again, with the wind blowing the way it is, you get it up in the air, and it looks like it's sailing at that end of the field. The third and eight now for Tyler Jones back in at quarterback. And he's going to keep it on a quarterback draw. Tyler Jones will come up short. He'll push it down to around the 36-yard line. Keenan Blalark came in and made the hit. Good decision by the, the Husky defense. If you're going to have a quarterback run the football on you, make sure he runs it right up the middle of the field. And when you hit him, make sure he remembers it. Keenan Blalark brings him down short of the first down stick. All right, Andrew Wellick, who we told you, is on the Lou Groza Award watch list for the top kicker in the country. This one is a long one. This one is going to be 54 yards. But he's got the win with it. And it's a fake. And they run and do not make the play. A poorly designed and poorly executed fake. If you're going to do that, you might as well allow Wellick just to punt the ball. That one goes awry. As you see, the, the Huskies pretty much in field goal prevent. Just and a poorly designed fake. Very poorly designed play. Doesn't go anywhere. So Northern will have very good field position. Start a drive. When we come back, a Comcast Sports Net. Mm, everything is so fresh. I wonder who her caterer is. It's me. <laughs> I'm the caterer. Please. Come on, Patricia. Who is it? I got everything at Jewel. What, you think I have a fancy chef back there with a tall white hat and a funny accent? Can I, Can I have, have his number? number? Jewel, helping make your life easier. Fifty-nine left. Second quarter. Northern Illinois bound a very strong rushing attack today. They've rumbled for 136 yards in the first half to just 57 for Eastern Michigan. But they've stumbled lately. They have. They have not been able to execute as of late offensively. Eastern Michigan just tried a fake field goal if you're just joining us and it went awry. So the Huskies very good field position to start this drive. With 259 left for Phil Horvath and company. A.J. Harris is the man in the backfield giving Garrett Wolf 
a bit of a breather. Yeah, this is an opportunity for them to kind of reestablish themselves. It almost looked like after the huge win over Miami last week and jumping out to a 14-point lead that the team almost got a little complacent. They relaxed. Yeah, and it looked like they, they gathered themselves on the sideline and Phil Horvath had some words, and I'm sure Joe Novak had some words and said, hey, listen. Crank it back up. That's right. You don't want this Eastern Michigan team thinking that they're in this ball game. A.J. Harris. A.J. Harris turns the corner, and he will pick up more than enough for a Northern Illinois first down all the way to the Eastern Michigan 45-yard line. It looks again like they're running downhill. Yeah, they are. Great vision again by A.J. Harris. He sees a, a, a spot to run. Gets a lot of help there from Chaton Powers. Sam Hurd also getting a block. But right there, Chaton Powers creates some space for A.J. Harris. And they get another first down. Pretty solid tackle by Rontrell Woodruff. Number 36 for Eastern Michigan. Horvath, wide receiver screen. Dumps it to Britt Davis, who's got wheels. Britt Davis up the sideline. He'll pick up eight, maybe nine. We'll see where they say he stepped out. But a good, solid play. They'll give him eight yards on that play. Good. A second and two. Once again, just trying to get the ball in your athlete's hands as quick as possible. And Britt Davis is as good an athlete as this Northern that Illinois team two. has. He gets, an, again, oh, another good block from Powers and from Hurd. And you just let this young man run into the Eastern Michigan secondary. But John Bond, the offensive coordinator, doing a very good job taking what that Eagle defense is giving them right now. Horvath. Horvath looking. Looking. Again, good coverage by Eastern Michigan. He fires, and it's incomplete. He was looking for the big man, the tight end. Jake Nordine, number 86, and he had no body between him and about 10, 15 yards downfield. Phil Horvath decided to tuck this ball and run. He certainly would have gotten the first down. Again, getting good protection from his front five. It decides, you saw right there, he had about 15 yards to run for the first down. And a good defensive play again by Corey Parker. Third and two situation, Garrett Wolf is your single back set now. And off Garrett Wolf, there's a flag. And I believe it's going to be a false start on Northern Illinois. I believe so. They just don't false look. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. They're just not real sharp right now. I know that's what Coach Novak's going to speak to them about when they get to the locker room here in about a minute and 50 seconds. But... That looks almost like that was caused by Phil Horvath. He seemed to be rocking back on his heels. But if they had gotten that playoff cleanly, Garrett Wolf had a whole lot of room to, to run. But I don't think Coach Novak's real happy with the lack of poise from his offense right now. Third and seven now from the 42. Horvath looking, pressure, throws. He's got Britt Davis. Britt Davis cannot break away, and he will be short of the first down, bringing up a fourth, and we'll call it four and a half, maybe five. Yeah, you had third down and seven, and they throw it to a five-yard route. And once again, we've talked about the yards after the catch with an athlete like Britt Davis, but right there, you catch the ball. He's a freshman. Go upfield, not backwards. Not only do you expose yourself to extra hits, you got to get past the first down marker. Time out on the field by the Northern Illinois yeah, Huskies. I, I think at this point it's too too uh, far to kick a field goal or attempted field goal. Especially think, in into the wind. Yeah, I think right now Joe Novak's probably making a decision to go for this. He feels good about his defense right now, slowing down Eastern Michigan. They've done nothing really on offense. I think they may take a shot at getting this fourth down. By the way, White Sox post game live immediately following game four of the ALCS, which is tonight. Sox a 2-1 lead in the series. They've got Freddie Garcia on the hill against Irvin Santana. Could be a good ball game. I just want I'm all the, the big A in Anaheim. I want all the naysayers to come out and say, guess what? I was wrong. If you said this team was going to choke, be a man and come out and say now, I was wrong. And there's a lot of people in Chicago, in the media. The writers. That's been right. Ridiculous. That's right. You're right. They won't come out and admit it. To me, there is no such thing as you almost choke. That's Either right. Either you choke or you didn't. You're in the ALCS and you're making hay right now. That's exactly right. It's White, so White Sox post game live immediately after the game tonight on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Look at that through the 05. 
current portion of this season from 03 to right now, Huskies have won 17 of 20 when they rush for 150 plus. And as I said, they're going to go for this fourth down. Yeah, I think this is a good decision. You can look for a little bubble screen maybe once again with Garrett Wolf. Swing him out. See if you get defense. Eastern Michigan will take a time. Well, I think Jeff Jenick wanted to see what Northern had on their minds. Good decision. Couple timeouts left in your hip pocket. If you are able to stop this Husky team from converting fourth down, they have a chance with the ball on the 40 yard line to take it in for some points before the the intermission. You take a chance and run the football? Well, when you got a running back like Garrett Wolf, who's averaging 141 yards per contest, I think you certainly think about it. Especially when you've got a veteran offensive line and you've rushed it already for more than 150 yards. I just like to see Garrett Wolf get the football in his hands in space. This ball is, is on the left hash. They lined up with their strength going to the wide side of the field. I really think that what they're going to try to do, whether they run it or throw it, is spread it out and try to get the ball in Garrett Wolf's hands and let him go with a little bit of distance. That's a good save, man. Real good Flip save. Chart almost flew into the third oh, row. Almost went into the top of the bleachers here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Phil Horvath either get it to Garrett Wolf and let him run wide or kind of roll to his right. Or run into the boundary. There's the handoff. Garrett and Wolf. he didn't get it. And I uh, oh. do not believe it. Depends where they spot it. It's going to be very, very close. I don't believe he got it. I think he's going to come up just short. It's hard to question a team that's averaging 212 yards per game on the ground and has had such an explosive offense. That's a good spot. The crowd doesn't like it, but it is a good spot, and I don't think they got it. I don't believe they did either. When you've got a running back like Garrett Wolf, a little surprised that they didn't get it to him. And Here comes the measurement. Get him running to the wide side of the field. Going to be very close. Garrett Wolf and Phil Horvath are right there. My guess is no. You want to want to throw your two cents in? That's too late now. He did not get it by that much. The nose of the football. You'll see once again they run the ball into the boundary, short side of the field. Get a good collapse block by Ben Look. It's a good spot. Yeah, I it's think it was spot. a good spot because yeah. he bounced off the ground. Again, I have to tell you, I'm a little, uh, pretty impressed with this Eastern Michigan, Eastern Michigan defense. Down, they have given up some yards 35. on the ground, but they have not given up the same type of yardage they gave up last year when they faced the Huskies. That's his 11th 100-yard game of his career. 14 carries, 100 yards here in the first half. Hard to believe they've run for over 150 yards, and I'm saying Eastern Michigan's got a Bonet looking, play. looking, throws and finds his man. Here's a flag. I think you're going to get unnecessary roughness. One of the Huskies went after Bonet after he threw the ball, or maybe, maybe Kenny West. Line of scrimmage. Kenny West got belted, but I thought Bonet was over the line of scrimmage. Illegal pass. Number 11. Pass the line of scrimmage. They threw the ball at the five-yard penalty from the spot of the pass. Down. Second down. It's not supposed to happen with a veteran quarterback. The ball snapped about the 35-yard line. And there he comes. He's you see him go right well, up the yeah, middle. That's just that's no question poor, about it. Poor awareness. Yeah. Got to know where you're at on the field. And poor awareness on my behalf as well, thinking that possibly the Huskies but had see, committed a personal foul. I didn't throw you under the bus like you did, did me when I thought the field goal was blocked. <laughs> you were acting all smart. I really wasn't. Bonet looking, looking, goes down the field, tipped away. There's, there's and I think Ke scene. Keenan Blaylock, I think, was the man who had his eyes on the big sandwich that was coming his way. But Eric Delorier normally catches this ball. He's a big target. Six foot four. It's actually a pretty well thrown ball that just, well, Keenan Blaylock may have tipped that pass. He had his eyes on it. He was thinking INT all the way. I did throw you under the bus earlier. Didn't you I? did. I apologize. You did. Not accepted. How are you getting home? <laughs> it's not much of a cab ride, is it? Probably two hundred twenty-five dollars. Probably. Bonet back looking, and he's hit, 
and throws it into the ground. I'll tell you what, Ken West just can't get a sack, can he? I mean, he's been pressuring the quarterback all day long. He had eight sacks last year. year. He just can't get the guys down this year. Applying the pressure, but just can't come up with that sack. And you'll see the pressure once again coming. Ken West is just... Bottom of your screen, there he comes. Just taking it to Courtney Ford. Forces Matt Bonet into throwing it into the ground. Well, the Huskies are going to get it back. Wellick, low kick, and he kicks it out of bounds. Huskies are going to get decent field position Well, we here. talked about it off the top. I mean, they have a significant size advantage with Sam Hurd in these smaller well, corners from Eastern is Michigan. As you look at Ken yard. West getting some quarterback pressure once again. Matt Bonet just not agile enough right now with that injured leg. Ken West is going to get a sack today. That's my prediction. Okay, he's been around the ball all afternoon. He has. He's played very, he very well. He's going to bring down either Matt Bonet or Tyler Jones before the day is done. Look for a little Sam Hurd at some point. First and ten for the you go, this drive. Do you go up top? Well, he's right six now. four and he's got great speed against a smaller corner. I think I'd give it a shot. Britt Davis, the man. In motion, Horvath looking, 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 steps up, going to run the football, and down he goes. Dragged down at the 36-yard line. I'll tell you what they're doing, Eastern Michigan. Clock ticking. Bringing someone up on Rope Sam Hurd and trying to jam Josh him at the, line of the at the line of scrimmage and floating the safety on top of him. Again, the offensive line does a pretty good job giving Horvath time. Huskies and no one's getting open. As you see, you see Stephen Lewis getting a piece of... of of Sam Hurd, and they're rolling a safety on top of him. Yeah, they're going to be content to go in 14 nothing, Or maybe not. Maybe they'll take a shot here. Clock ticking down now toward 10 seconds. We're inside 10 seconds. They will give it to Garrett Wolf, which is, you never know, something can always happen in his hands. Garrett Wolf. That's going to be the final play of the half. Tackled Huskies head to the Michael locker Richardson. room. Eagles to their locker room with Northern and Illinois the the first in command. 14 nothing. It started quickly. It has slowed down considerably. But the Huskies do have the lead. Tommy, they, they ran the ball very effectively they early. And they stayed away from, other than the quick turnover early, they stayed away from the big turnover. Well, I think what Joe Novak is most excited about is that his defense threw a first half shutout. This is a defense that has struggled so far this year. They're giving up an average of 30 points per game. So to hold Eastern Michigan scoreless in the first half, I know Coach Novak's got to be very happy about that. We'll talk with Joe in just a moment. Gorgeous day here on homecoming. A capacity crowd at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. And the Huskies a 14-0 lead. There'll be some festivities here at the half to induct some new members of the Northern Illinois Athletic Hall of Fame. Plus, we'll take you through all the stats. Let's go down to Casey with Joe Novak. Okay, thanks, Cap. I am with NIU head coach Joe Novak. Coach, uh, your impressions of the first half today? Well, the win's a factor for both teams, and Eastern Michigan's playing some good defense right now. So, uh, you know, we got to get some things in there we think can go. I would think you have to be very happy. Your defense pitching a shutout so far. Your impressions of the defense? Defense is playing better. We need to continue. Like I said, each quarter, when you got that win, it's a little bit different for each team. Final question for you. What would you like to see your team do differently or better in the second half today? Well, we need to score some points. We need to move it consistently. Like I said they're doing a real good job with our running game we're having trouble throwing it especially into the, the win thanks coach good luck second half head coach joe novak here at halftime as we send it back up to camp and waddle all right tommy some festivities getting ready to take place here at the half we'll run down some of the statistics from the first half we'll preview the second half tommy will give us his keys it's all coming up to stick around at comcast sports Day. Just two more chances this fall to catch exciting NIU football at Husky Stadium in DeKalb. NIU capped off a great 2004 campaign with the fall championship. And in 2005, head coach Joe Novak's Huskies are hungrier than ever for a Mid-American Conference title. It's high school band day on Saturday, October 29th, when the Cardinals of Ball State travel to DeKalb for a 3.05 kickoff. Order your Husky football tickets through Ticketmaster or go online at NIUHuskies.com.
Wildcat ATVs come with 12 inches of ground clearance and our exclusive speed rack system. And since they're so indestructible, they also come with a three-year warranty. Even the accessories. Arctic Cat. The NHL is back. NHL Center Ice is your ticket to get inside the NHL with up to 40 games a week outside your local area. Don't miss the intensity of increased rivalry, great new rules, and no more ties. The shootout is on NHL Center Ice. Order by October 31st and get NHL Center Ice for $129, $30 off the regular season price. When it comes to sports, we're on your team. To order, call 1-888-SPORTS-IN. I heard about this company dumping toxins in local rivers, so I called their executives to say stop. But they're just counting profits while the rivers are being destroyed and local kids are getting cancer. So I organized a huge protest and actually got the company shut down. But now half the town's unemployed and the kids are twice as sick so they can't get health care since their parents lost the insurance they had when they worked for the company that dumped all the toxins. Comcast. Focused on community. Welcome back here to Husky Stadium at Northern Illinois University where the Huskies lead Eastern Michigan 14 to nothing. Welcome back to the U.S. Cellular Halftime Show and joining us now is the head basketball coach at Northern Illinois, Mr. Rob Judson and it's football season, of course middle of football season, but it's the first day of basketball. First practice today. Uh, you're in your fifth year here at Northern. You're pretty fired up to start the 2005-2006 uh, season. We're very excited. Thanks for asking. Had a great practice this morning, and uh, we're really looking forward to this year. You've got uh, four guys back from last year's team. You only lose one starter, so obviously some experience coming back. And I see where one publication had you uh, preseason pick number two in the in the MAC West. What uh, give us an idea of what you're kind of looking for from this year's team? What are the expectations? Yeah, a lot of uh, experience returning. I think we have about 80% of our scoring and an another 80% of our rebounding back. Only lost one senior in Jonathan Bird, so we gained a lot of experience last year. The MAC is always a tough league. You know, you have to be ready to play all the time you can see that on the football field here uh, we're really looking forward though to competing we've got a great home schedule especially in the non-conference this year we'll play DePaul at home play Kansas State at home the first time Northern's ever had a Big East and a Big 12 team at home in the same season and you're welcoming in a, a talented transfer from Iowa who's from originally just down the road here from Rochelle Ben Rand uh, how's he look so far Ben Rand's doing very well uh, we recruited him real hard out of high school and as you mentioned he went to the Big Ten we got him back this year he sat out last year and we're looking for him to add a lot of athleticism for us and some good depth as well talk to me about what you feel the keys for this year's team will be for you to have a successful season in Mac play this year well, you know, when you talk to a coach in the preseason, Casey, they're always going to say defense. Right. So, uh, but every every team that has won the Mid-American Conference the last four years has led the league in field goal percentage defense. So we're going to concentrate on that. We were in the top five last year. We'd like to move up to that top spot because that always uh, does well for you in the standings. Based on what you know about the other MAC schools, uh, the schools and the players that they have coming back and how the recruiting wars kind of went, how do you handicap the MAC this year? I think Ohio will be picked to win it. They're the returning uh, uh, conference tournament champs. They have a good, strong group coming back. Uh, Akron will be strong, uh, as will in our league, Toledo. Toledo's uh, got a very strong team returning. and uh, But again, the, the MAC conference is just always very competitive up and down the line. All right, Coach Judson, uh, always good seeing you. Good luck this upcoming season. Okay, great to talk with you. Keep Cap and uh, Tommy <laughs> in line up there, okay? Hey, that's not easy to do. That's we might right. have to send Hollis Thomas up there. Okay. okay. All right, Thank very you. good. We're going to try to get in uh, Carol Owens. And uh, Carol Owens was part of the 89 90 NIU women's basketball team that was inducted into the NIU Athletic Hall of Fame. Carol, you're in already as a player. Today you go in as a team member, that 89 team. You're starting your first season as a women's head coach, so I guess there's only one thing left to do. Pull off the hat trick and uh, go in now into the Hall of Fame as a coach. That would be great. <laughs> I would love that. That would be awesome. It'd be great for our kids. And uh, that's why I'm here, and I, I want to give back to the university. It's meant so much to me. 
this has been some great memories for me when I was here playing and as a student, so it's good to be back. Homecoming is exciting. I was going to say, it's got to really be a special homecoming for you because it's a, it's a homecoming not only just to come to the event, but to begin a new career here at Northern Illinois as the women's head basketball coach, a, a place, as you said, uh, you're a member of the Hall of Fame as a player. What are you expecting from uh, this team? I know you've only had one practice. You began practice this morning, but uh, how do the troops look, and what kind of season are you expecting from the ladies here at Northern? Look really good. We had our first practice today, this morning, and uh, the kids were excited, a little jitters. I had some jitters myself. <laughs> and uh, actually, they, you know, looking at their practice gear reminds me of my practice gear, which I still have. So we did a lot of drill work. We're headed in the right direction. We're getting fundamentally sound, and we're just taking it one day at a time. Final question for you. Who are some of the, the key players that you're counting uh, for big things this upcoming season? Well, obviously, we have some upperclassmen. One of them is Stephanie Raymond, who uh, last year was our leading scorer, led the team in steals also. So we're looking for great things from her you know, on both ends of the court. Kristen Wainer in the post. Uh, done some great things she's going to be a consistent scorer inside and then now we have back healthy mary basic who's going to be a key uh, instrumental part in our success because she could do so many things on the on the wing so i'm excited all right well welcome back again carol and uh, good luck as you embark on your coaching career here at northern thank you go huskies carol owens the women's head basketball coach here at northern illinois in her first season you're tuned into the u.s cellular halftime show Dave Kaplan, Tom Waddle will be back coming up with highlights and stats of the first half. It is Northern 14, Eastern Michigan, nothing. NIU, serving the heart of America's heartland. Educating new leaders for the nation's third largest region. Bringing expertise and innovation to communities and public schools. Creating new jobs and new workers. Conducting research that improves our quality of life. Northern Illinois University. Across the region, from Chicago to the Mississippi, NIU works. What makes a butter burger better? Well, it's cooked up fresh and made to order. So good. Mm. Hot and juicy. Taste it. Uh, Rushed right to you. So good. You can taste how much we care. Oh, that's luscious. So good. Lightly buttered. Tasty. Toasted bun. So good. Bigger, better butter burger. Colors. Taste how much we care. Wow, just look at this huge auto mall right here at I-88 and Orchard Road. It's the North Aurora Auto Mall. Now, I believe it's the largest automotive discount center in Chicagoland. Seven huge dealerships right at I-88 and Orchard Road. What a selection. Over 3,000 cars, trucks, and vans. And low discount prices every day. What a great location right here at I-88 and Orchard Road. The North Aurora Auto Mall. Exit Orchard Road off I-88. You torched your car. Why? Practicing for hell. This Friday. Pleased to meet you. What's the matter, Henry? What if one man's nightmare... That's my father. You told me your father was dead. He is dead. The next time walking out the door... ...became another man's reality. I spoke to him more than less than an hour ago. She's been dead for months. From the director of Monster's Ball, Ewan McGregor, Naomi Watts, Ryan Gosling... Henry! I wish you didn't have to see this. Stay. Rated R. Friday, only in theaters. Oh, that's a keeper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Screensaver. Wait, you gotta see this one. Oh. oh! Look at him standing on his hind legs, ready to pounce. Wow. Who knew woodchucks would attack like that? It's like a brown furry missile coming right at you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell better stories. Your 270 horsepower, 7 passenger Nissan Pathfinder. <laughs> Woodchuck. <laughs> Welcome back to the U.S. Cellular Halftime Show. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle with you here at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. The Huskies a 14-0 lead. Tommy, let's take a look quickly at the scoreboard today. Brought to you by Culver's as we look around the Mid-American Conference at some of today's action. There you have Ohio blown out at Central Michigan. Miami of Florida crushes Temple. That was 34-3 with 11 minutes left second quarter and they put it on cruise control. Bowling Green 27-7 winners over Buffalo today. 
Kent State loses at Navy 34-31. Miami of Ohio in a shootout over Akron 51-23. And Toledo has the lead on the road in the third quarter at Ball State. Well, take a look at some of the highlights in the first half. Northern able to run the ball effectively early. No scoring after that quick 14-0 lead, though. Yeah, they came out and established the run. 26 carries, 159 yards. Weren't able to pass it very effectively. You see here, Horvath gets it to Britt Davis. Only 48 yards passing for Horvath in the first half because of the win. They put the ball in this kid's hands. Garrett Wolf, 15 carries, 101 yards, and a touchdown. Inside, outside, he was finding lanes in that Eastern Michigan defense. A.J. Harris also found some running room out there. He runs it eight times for 52 yards. He found his way into the end zone as well. Some trickeration, as they call it. Britt Davis with the reverse was going to throw it. Had no one open, so he decided to run the football. Offensively, as you said, you see A.J. Harris getting it into the end zone. He scored 14 quick points, but this is an offense that was averaging 35 for contest. So I'm not sure that Coach Joe Novak is excited about what they've done so far on offense. But look at the defensive totals. They've held Eastern Michigan to just 81 total yards of offense, zero points. And for a defense, a young defense that was given up 30 for Saturday, I think Joe Novak is happy with what his defense has done so far. Got to be very happy with what the defense has done, but he also has to look at the wind here and say, guys, we could have a, a fluky turnover trying to throw the ball in this wind. Let's take care of the football and try and start running downhill again. It was one of my keys, wasn't it? Pound the rock with Garrett Wolf. This is young man that's averaging 141 yards per contest on the ground. Best in the MAC, fifth or sixth in all of college football. Give him the ball, let him wear out that Eastern Michigan defense, and when he gets tired, give it to A.J. Harris. But this offense is based on running first, throwing second, so I don't think that the wind should have a significant issue with regard to the second half. Unless it comes down to a kicking game. That's right. And then all bets are off. As a former kicker, I can tell you, you don't want to kick in today's conditions. We'll come back. Second half kickoff right around the corner. It's Huskies over Eagles. 14-0. Second half next on Comcast Sports Net. I've been meaning to talk to you about a college savings plan for Ryan. Well, the way the cost of tuition is heading, I'm not surprised. One thing you can do... For more than 145 years, Northwestern Mutual and its products have quietly earned the most enviable reputation. David! This is Steve, my Northwestern Mutual representative. I've been wanting to talk to you guys. Isn't it time you had a quiet conversation of your own? Northwestern Mutual Financial Network. The Quiet Company. Have a quiet conversation of your own with the Efner Financial Group. You know, with most wireless companies, you don't just get charged for calls you make on your cell phone. You also get charged for calls you receive. Did you just make that face? That, huh? You made that off. What? I didn't know that face. Well, at U.S. Cellular, you don't get charged for incoming calls. Did you just make that other face? That, I think I'm going to switch face. With unlimited call me minutes, there's no charge for incoming calls. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Right now, get unlimited local call me minutes on plans $39.95 and higher. Shopping for a mortgage. When you're comparing two good mortgage companies, how do you choose? Pick the mortgage company that offers the lowest rate and fees. At Guaranteed Rate, our low rates have turned the mortgage industry upside down. Visit our website where we post a true rate and fee comparison of 10 leading lenders. And if we're not the lowest, we'll pay you $500. Call us at 866-934-RATE. That's 866-934-RATE. Guaranteed Rate. Lowest rate. Guaranteed. Amco Transmissions wants you to know, after 12 months, your transmission fluid can turn old and dirty. The problem is, many shops only replace four quarts. That's why there's Amco's Power Purge. It replaces all 12, and that's better for your transmission. The Power Purge, only $79.95 at Amco. 
Hello, everyone. Chuck Garfine back in our Comcast Sportsnet studios. We'll get you back out to the game in a moment. But first, tonight, the White Sox now just two wins away from the World Series. Here's how they got it done last night. Game three from Anaheim. The White Sox got started early. Top of one, a man on. That man is on no longer. Paul Canerco connects his third homer of the postseason. That's a two-run shot. Three-nothing Sox. Top of five, it's four-nothing. A man on second. Canerco again. Tadahito Aguchi tries to score from second. He will. It's five-nothing Sox. Next inning, the Angels with a man on for Orlando Cabrera. And a 2-2 pitch. Cabrera drives in two. That's a laser. A home run. The Angels within three. Bottom of seven, Garland looking strong. He gets Benji Molina swinging. Seven Ks for John Garland. He goes the distance. The Sox win 5-2. John goes the distance. Gives up only four hits. Strikes out seven. Walks one. In fact, it's the only walk the Sox have given up all series. The top four hitters in the Sox lineup had eight of their 11 hits. The Sox take a 2-1 series lead. I hope I've convinced my team, the guys that are backing me up. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, people are enjoying coming out watching me pitch, um, enjoying on TV watching me pitch. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things, it's, it's not easy to go out and win a game. A lot of things have to go right. And uh, over the past few years, uh, things might have rolled the other way. And, and this year I had, uh, had some luck on my side. Tonight in game four, it'll be Freddy Garcia against Irvin Santana. Garcia last pitched in the Sox clincher against Boston. He'll face Santana, who saved the day for the Angels in game five against the Yankees when Bartolo Colon had to come out. Garcia versus Santana tonight. All right, that'll do it for now. Be sure to join us for Sox postgame live right after the game ends tonight. Enjoy the second half. Second half action right around the corner. Beautiful day here in DeKalb, Illinois. Although, Tommy, it's getting a little chillier as the it day is. goes on. The wind, I brought a jacket. The wind is blowing, and uh, it's getting kind of crazy here in the television booth. All right, down to the sidelines. Casey Kaler with Coach Jeff Jenick of EMU. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Eastern Michigan head coach Jeff Jenick and uh, coach, your impressions of the first half uh, from where we sit. Obviously, it looked like your defense played well. Offense struggled a bit. What do you think? Well, defense was playing well, and uh, we continue to really do a good job on Garrett Wolf and containing him. You know, he's just such a great back. We just have to get a lot of guys there near the ball. And then uh, offensively, we got to make plays. You know, we're dropping balls, not hitting wide open guys, and we got to continue to press on offense. All right, thanks for your time, coach. You back, Casey. All right, back upstairs. Thanks, Casey. You can see the flags blowing fairly heartily, Tommy. I think it'll limit what either team can do through the air, but it's interesting. You hear Coach Janik talk about how they contained Garrett Wolf, and for the most part, they did. But when you look at the stat sheet, he ran it 15 times for 101 yards and a touchdown. So I guess when you compare it to last season when he ran for 325 on this Eastern Michigan team, they did do a good job containing Garrett Wolf in the first half. Wellick will kick it away for EMU. A.J. Harris and Adrell Hansbro are the deep men for the Northern Illinois Huskies who will get the football. They won the toss actually early today and deferred so they can have it for the second half dealing with this really tough win today. And that kick, like Nendix at that end, will go out the back of the end zone and roll all the way down to the street. Tonight, the excitement of Major League Soccer is on Comcast Sportsnet. Zach Thornton and the Chicago Fire out for another big road win when they clash with the New England Revolution. It's Chicago Fire Soccer tonight at 6.30, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. You ever seen Zach up close? He's built like a linebacker. He is a very a large man. Player. And he I is. would think that would help you as a goalie. The bigger you are, the less space they have to kick it past you, right? I would think. And up to Garrett Wolf, he breaks a tackle, and now he runs into a wall of white shirts at the 23-yard line. Well, this is what they're going to want to do again, start the second half, establish the run because of the wind. They're not going to be able to successfully throw the football. Listen to the hit here. Great vision. Bang. 
I said it a, a thousand times probably in the last two years covering this team, but I am shocked at how durable and strong that young man is at his size. Last year, or last time these two teams met a year ago, a little more than a year ago, 43 carries. Horvath looks to throw here. And it'll be an incomplete pass. I was about to say, a year ago, he carried the ball against Eastern Michigan 43 times for 300 and 25 yards. Brandon Davis unable to put that one away. Can you imagine being able to be 5'9 and take the pounding of 43 carries? Well, if he's 5'9, he's got Gene Simmons platform boots on because he's listed at 5'7 in the book. And they usually take some liberty with those statistics. Horvath looks to throw and it's picked off. Pass was tipped at the line and intercepted. Huge break for Eastern Michigan right away in the first minute of the second half. Daniel Holtzclaw off the deflection. There's the pass. It's batted away. Jason, and there's Holtzclaw. Yep. Jason Jones does a great job getting his hands up. You try to rush the passer. He's being double teamed. Get a hand up. Good things happen. And Holtzclaw comes down with the interception. And as you say, not what Northern wanted. That offense once again has looked lackadaisical from the second quarter on, not, not a good way to start the second half. Tyler Jones will get the start in the second half at quarterback. They used two different quarterbacks in the first half. And Jones will keep it again and run the football. And that's just a design quarterback draw. Takes a step back and stutters. Matt Bonet, who's been dealing with a leg injury, played a lot of the first half. They alternated quarterbacks. Right now, Tyler Jones is getting the start. Because if you can't throw the ball with this wind, you'd want a better runner at quarterback. And with Bonet's leg injury, it's a real problem. You're absolutely right. Not much of a threat. Limping around out there. Hand off to Harrison. He turns the corner. Harrison across the 20 near the 15 will pick up a first down. Dustin Uchik made the tackle for the Huskies. Uh, it just looks like Eastern Michigan's got a little bit more bounce in their step right now than the Huskies. Dwayne Harrison, the, the true freshman, finds his way to the outside, and Dustin Uchik saves a touchdown. First and 10 at the Northern 17. That turnover has breathed some life into this Eagle offense. Tyler Jones again, design play. The quarterback keeps it and is inside the 15, falls near the 14-yard line. Tremaine Riley, I believe, is the man slow to get up. Number 85, 5'8", 164, a junior, and he will come off. He is limping noticeably. If that, at that size, you do not want to be in the tackle box. He was trying to help out and get his quarterback a block. but Admire the guts. That's right. But, boy, it's painful. I think I just saw steam coming out of Joe Novak's ears. Second and seven. Hand off again. And Williamson slips. A little counter play. Pardon me, Harrison slipped and Utchik fell on top yeah. of him to that, make the tackle. That play's made by Josh Allen, who gets good penetration and forces the running back to bounce outside where Utchek is there to clean up the pile. But again, Josh Allen, a true freshman, steps up, gets some penetration, and disrupts that running play. You'll Third see and seven now. Utchek, their leading tackler, despite missing a game a few weeks ago. Right, he missed the Tennessee Tech game. Tyler Jones looking, pressure, throws, and it is incomplete over the top of Harrison. And he looked and said, whoa, I never saw the ball come. Well, Quince Holman was beaten down on him. Tyler Jones really with no time to throw the football. You'll see Quince Holman just comes free. And that, and that didn't look like it would have gone anywhere no, had it been caught. Trying to set up a screen. This is a and just really sniffed out very well by the Husky defense. Third field goal attempt of the day now for Andrew Wellick. One hit the upright, one was a fake that was missed. Play went awry, and here's their third opportunity. 36 yards, kick is up. It is good. Nails it, and they're on the board. Eastern Michigan.
puts up three, and they have cut into that northern lead quickly. 11.41 left, third quarter, 14-3 Huskies in DeKalb. My wife works hard, the kids are 10, 6, and 3. Our life together gets a little crazy. So I called Applebee's like I've done before. They brought our favorite foods out to my car door. With Applebee's car side to go, you call it in, we bring it out. Now my wife wants to meet me just as fast as she can Cause there's something women like about a pickup man Applebee's car side to go It's not fast food, it's Applebee's food fast What do you value? Do you value clean, inexhaustible solar energy? Do you value the comfort and safety of those you love? Do you value the innovations that make home life more livable, convenient, and enjoyable? Or maybe you value a simple way of reaching out to those you love. In so many things you value, Kyocera brings new value to your world. Kyocera, the new value frontier. Welcome back. 11.41 left in the third. Northern Illinois, a 14-3 lead. There is the North Aurora Auto Mall scoring drive for the Eagles. Six plays, 16 yards after the pick of Horvath on the tip. And yeah. Wellick, the 36-yard field you goal. You just cannot let an inferior opponent hang around. And I don't say that you know, to get on Jeff Jennick's team, but right now the Huskies are a better football team, and they don't look like they're interested at this point. A.J. Harris going to watch that one bounce through the back of the end zone and roll down near the street again. Boy, it's fun to kick when you've got the wind behind you like that. I'd like to play golf and have that opportunity on the tee. I don't need the extra help. Banging at 315, 320 off the tee anyway. I don't need the, the wind behind you. Excuse me, I'm sorry. What's all the chuckling here in the television booth for? How do we get you off the tour to do the game today? <laughs> I just took the week off. My back was a little sore. Carrying your money belt around? That's right. Well, I said the first drive of the second half was important for the Huskies. The second drive is even more important now after the turnover. Hand off to Garrett Wolf, picks his way. Garrett Wolf will be gang tackled around the 23 or 4 yard line. He slowed down a bit from the 750 yeah. yard pace you had him on earlier. Well, he's now on a 202 yard pace, but again, they're just trying to use their size and strength up front. They're getting good push, but the, the secondary and the the linebackers for Eastern Michigan doing an excellent job filling in. You see Rontrell Woodruff, Woodruff a four-year starter in that Eagles secondary, having a nice afternoon. Horvath looking, throws, has his man Hurd, and Hurd's got a first down. First down to Huskies. They'll spot it just past the 35-yard line. Well, first down. And it's, you know, there's there's no secret. I mean, when, when a team is having success stopping your run, you're eventually going to have to threaten them in the passing game. And, and it is not an ideal situation today because of the wind. But Horvath is going to have to make some of these completions today. And Sam Hurd, an explosive weapon, gets his hands on the ball for a first down. And up again, Garrett Wolf, and he will be knocked down and may have lost half a yard. Boy, EMU has really, yeah. really done a good job well, after the first drive. Well, defensive coordinator Jay Peterson is a smart football coach, and he realizes that the, the most important thing his squad can do is contain the run. And you see a lot of very good open field tackles today from the Eagles. But they're dropping eight guys into the tackle box and forcing Northern to throw the football with these wind conditions and with Phil Horvath's lack of accuracy today. They they stayed in this ball game. Horvath looking to throw again, throws downfield, finds the tone Powers, and Powers is belted, and there are flags flying. They are going to get Doug Free, I believe. They call him Dougie Freak. His size, his athleticism, his strength. Three on the offense. The 15-yard penalty, I'm sorry, 62. The 15-yard penalty to be third down. A little frustrated right now. It's a very good play, just curl route, good control passing route. Good throw, good catch, and Doug Free comes in to clean up the pile a little bit. And 
Can't do that. Get Doug a better Freed. look at it right here. Yeah, that's, that's not going to be allowed. Borderline. She because, closed this thing from a man, but I'd rather have the 15 back. Horvath looking, looking, goes downfield, throws, and he misses his man, Jake Nordeen, his big tight end. I think the wind is a problem. I just think Phil Horvath's not having a, a great day with his accuracy, as we talked about earlier. Came into today, 72 percent completion rate but even there if the ball does drop over top the eastern michigan defender jake nordine is going to get a face full of a green helmet andy dit better 6-1 freshman is in the punt and he fumbles the snap and now he escapes and turns the corner he is running for his life and he'll be buried down at the 29 yard line Another big mistake by the Huskies. And he's a freshman, but as he was running, the thought through my mind is kick the ball. He had an opportunity as he was running to kick it. It's asking a lot. That right there, you just got to catch the ball and kick it, but he does a great job eluding some of the Eagle defenders. Right now, kick it. Set your feet and kick it. Yep, on the run, just get rid of it. And no one's going to mistake him for A.J. Harris or Garrett Wolf. So just do what you can to kick the ball downfield. And if you get an illegal man down, then you're going to get a chance to re-kick it. But two drives have ended up in a fumble and a botched punt. Well, I think he had designs on getting the first down. Well, he's delusional if he thinks that was going to happen. Tyler Jones, and there's a reverse, and the ball's on the ground. And the Huskies will cover... Eastern Michigan fortunate to get it back, but a huge loss. That's what they needed to get some momentum pointed back in their direction. Just a little razzle dazzle, the trickery. And AJ Bennett just does not secure the football. I'm not so sure that was going anywhere anyway. Lucky to get it back. Lucky to Jason, get it back. Jason Hunt right. Was AJ right there. Bennett? Yep, Jason Hutton does a nice job. I'm not sure he wasn't going to run down A.J. Bennett anyway. And Craig Rush was right there as well. Second and 24. Now a lot of plays called for this. And that's intercepted. Hansbrough picks it off. Picking his way back upfield, and he belted down at the 33-yard line. Alva Hansbrough makes the pick. A man is down for Eastern Michigan. We'll get your report as soon as we see who it is. But Northern gets the ball back. Official Hans timeout for an injury. Also a TV timeout. Hansbro, a great, great job catching the football. Hard to believe this is just the second interception for the Huskies in the sixth game of the season. But once again, a momentum turner. And Matt Bonet just makes a mistake throwing into double coverage. And the Huskies will take over when we come back. We'll come back. We'll get you an injury update. Huskies have the ball back. Team up with the Huskies. Join the Husky Club today, where your financial support assists in providing a world-class academic and athletic experience for 426 student-athletes. Ten academic All-Americans. 105 Husky Scholars and 57 Victory Scholars. 10 4.0 Scholars. 43 Mid-American Conference Commissioner Award recipients. Call 815-753-1923 or visit us on the web at NIU Husky. I wear the bear. I wear the bear. I wear the bear. We wear the bear. I wear the bear for kids with cancer. Cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children. Wear the bear and help bear necessities in the fight against pediatric cancer. Wear the bear and help kids like me. Order your bear tie today. Call 312-836-BEAR or visit bearnecessities.org. Wear the bear for kids with cancer. We wear the bear for kids with cancer. Ability. 
A.J. Bennett was the man who was injured, number two. And you'll see right here, he catches a knee right in the head. Yeah, that's scary. He was able to walk off the field, though, under his own power. Good to see, and they have taken him to the locker room. Garrett Wolf drags tacklers near the 40-yard line. I've got a feel, this feeling. This to me is the biggest drive well, of the game. I was going to say, i got a feeling if they don't do something offensively here, Joe Novak may have this team running for hour after hour after hour tomorrow. You see how Alva Hansbro with it, the interception is first on the season. But Joe first can, of his career. Yeah, Joe cannot be overly excited about his offensive production so far today. Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf picks his way across midfield. Football's on the ground. Eastern Michigan says they have it, and the officials concur. Another Northern Illinois turnover. I believe this team, this Northern team fumbled, what, once last year? Maybe twice last season? So far coming into today's game, they've fumbled seven times. You see Garrett Wolf running to daylight, and the ball's, the ball's loose. Yeah, that ball he lost loose. control He's holding the way down. on his leg. And it just... That's where it comes out, absolutely. right there. Ron Terrell Wood Woodruff. The previous play is under review. I think that's going to stand. Or is it Michael Richardson actually does a nice job stripping the ball from Garrett Wolf? I think that that call is going to stand. I agree with you. That to me is a fumble. But I do like replay. I Absolutely. really do. Absolutely. Hey, listen, these kids practice so hard and are involved so long, not just during the season, but in the off season, that you just don't want an opportunity to go to a bowl game or do some wonderful things to go by the wayside because of a mistaken call. You see right here, let's see when the ball comes loose. The ball is loose right yeah, there. That ball's, and his knee's not down yet. Yeah, you can't really see from that angle, but the ball is kind of being juggled. He's got it pinned on his leg, but I'm not so sure they're going to suggest that that is control. Especially when it was moving from his upper body down to his leg. That's right. And as they say, what is the phrase? Irrefutable evidence. That's right. Thank you. Once again, a, a swarming effort by that oh, eagle defense. You know what? The, if they give him possession it's on gonna his leg, then, yeah. then they will keep the football. Well, but I'm not so sure when it goes from his arm and it slides down his leg. I'm, I'm not positive that that's going to be considered possession of the football. I'm going to say that they... The fumble call stands. I'm going to be my prediction. I agree with you. Now, see, I was talking with my brother about it yesterday, especially after the big White Sox problem with the uh, drop third strike. He does not want to see replay in any sport. He likes the human element. Oh, I like I like instant replay in certain situations. And by the way, this is the first replay Northern has at kind of gone through in their at history. Home in their history. That's yep. right. the PA announcer is telling the folks here in DeKalb all of the rules and regulations and important issues surrounding instant replay. I think that play is going to stand. And Doug Free once again coming over to clean up a pile. He does. Watch 62. Now, that's a judgment call, obviously. And on the field, it was ruled a fumble, and I don't disagree with it. It's a lonely official who's going to have to come out from underneath that replay, replay whatever he's hanging out underneath and suggest that the call may stand. While we're stopped here as they review this, the, the Mac is using replay as an experiment this year. And the call is going to stand. We are being told the call will stand. It is a fumble. This is a one-year experiment that the Mac is trying with instant replay. I think it's a good idea. I really do. After I think review, the play calls to stand on the field. The first down, Eastern Michigan. See, the one thing I don't understand is when fans boo or they're not happy if they go in and review it obviously the, the call was correct then well there have been some incidents you know that i 
witnessed. One was Bears in, in Detroit Lions a couple of years ago, or if not last year. The that, Bernard Berry play? Absolutely. And, uh, See, and I thought the officials got it right. Yeah, I disagree with that. But there are some, some times when it is still up for debate. Bonet now back in at quarterback. Tim Connor carries the football. 5'10", 185-pound freshman, number five on your scorecard. This Eastern Michigan football team is going to continue to grow and get better and better with every rep every week because they are playing a number of young kids. And that man right there, Jeff Jenick, a solid football coach. Bonet looking, looking in the pocket, throws, finds his man. It's not going to go very far. Deion Smith, the man that came in and cleaned up the play. Dwayne Bracey, who plays both ways, right. quarterback just, and wide receiver. Just going to say. Northern does a great job defending this, just keeps Deion Bracey. Deion Smith keeps Deion Bracey in front of him. Adriel Hansbrough helps out, but Eastern with a third and nine, third eight and a half. By the way, when Tremaine Riley was injured, we, he was taken off the field. He now has been carried to the locker room and is not expected to return. So we hope everything is okay for Tremaine. Tyler Jones keeps it. Tyler Jones is short of a first down, but rumbles near the 36, 37 yard line of Northern Illinois. I'm not sure that was a great call easy for me to say up here in the booth but this play really hasn't worked all day and Tyler Jones had no interest in pitching that ball probably because Alva Hansbro had his eyes on the pitch man but Dustin Utchick made a heck of a hit they've done a very good job containing the spread offense today fourth and three and they will go for it with Tyler Jones at quarterback Jones going to keep it. Jones belted down across the 35, and I think he's got more than enough for a first down. It's going to be close. We'll see where they spot it. They're married to that play, that's for sure. That is very close. This would be a huge moral victory for the Husky defense. I think the Huskies may have gotten to a very kind spot here. I'll tell you, the, their offense has not done them any favors here in the second half. That is a first down. Well, we talked about it earlier. They've allowed this Eastern Michigan football team to hang in there, and again, it's just a designed quarterback draw. They actually do a pretty good job with it, but they're fourth and short. They're able to convert. Tyler Jones stays in at quarterback. Out of the shotgun. Connor and Harrison. In the deuce backfield. Jones pitches to Connor. A lot of red shirts. They will wrap him up at the 31 or 32 yard line. Probably very quiet today. Yes, they are. Things have not gone the Huskies' way on offense. Once again, Josh Allen does a nice job forcing this play back to the middle of the field. Josh Allen may have got held there. Keenan Blaylar cleans up the play, but Josh Allen has done some good things defensively out there. Bone now back in at quarterback. Give me a different look. I just don't know how you establish any rhythm alternating quarter. Bonet gets it up just before he's going to be sacked. Keenan Blaylark among the red shirts. Ray Smith also rumbling in to make a tackle with Deion Smith. Well, they have not racked up a whole lot of yards so far today. Eastern Michigan has not, but if they continue this drive and get it in the end zone, they'll find themselves just four points back. Bonet Boy, nearly that sacked. bad leg again. Nearly sacked. Bone going to throw, and it's batted down. Third and one, it's batted down. Fourth and short again. I think Craig Rush was the man who got the big old paw up there and said, no. And 
they're going to try a field goal, as you say. There it is, number 99. He's had a heck of a day. He has. Filling in for Larry English. Craig Rush has had a nice afternoon. Eastern Michigan today, 102 yards of total offense. But now, a field goal here, and you're one score and a two-point conversion away from tying the football game. Yeah. Andrew Wellick, this one will come from 44 yards. He has plenty of legs for it. The kick is up, and it is good. He nails it, and it's a 14-6 game with 4.37 left. We'll take a timeout and come back. Huskies try and get their offense out of first gear. After this, a Comcast Sports Time to take five. Casey's will be there. Time to take five. Right now, pick up any large, made-from-scratch, single-topping pizza for $9.99 or any two for $17.99 and get a free can of pop with the purchase of any Deli Express chuck wagon or big chuck sandwich. Your convenience store and a whole lot more. Yeah, there's so much more. Time to take by. It's Casey's General Store. Northern Illinois University, serving the region from Chicago to the Mississippi with state-of-the-art branch campuses in Naperville, Hoffman Estates, and Rockford. NIU delivers the education you need to advance your career. From seminars and conferences to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees, NIU blends the best of traditional classes and online learning. NIU outreach centers offer flexible, affordable, and convenient programs for students, businesses, and communities. Where you need it, when you need it, NIU works. Eastern Michigan, we're getting ready to kick off after an Andrew Wellick 44-yard field goal. Let's take a look at our North Aurora Auto Mall scoring drive. We'll get that for you in a moment. There it is. Eight plays, 20 yards, took 340 off the clock, and Wellick bangs through the field goal with plenty to spare. And now it's a one-score game, Tom That's Wallace. Right. This second half has been a disaster offensively for the Huskies. Two drives totaling probably less than 50 yards have worked out the six points for Eastern Michigan. And by the way, a final now. Toledo has won at Ball State today, 34 to 14. Another high, deep kick. This one will come down and go out of bounds. So we saw Nendik have problems over there, kick one out of bounds. So the ball will be spotted at the 35-yard line, first and 10, Northern Illinois. The 35-yard line, first down. Well, the wind continues to blow hard out there. Nothing like college football Saturdays, though. I agree with you. I don't think Andrew Wellock is really interested in kicking it to A.J. Harris anyway. He leads the MAC with 28 yards per kick return, but that's... Really not what they were looking for either. Powers and Hurd, the wide receivers for Northern Illinois, single back set, Garrett Wolf. And they're going to try and just run the football. Garrett Wolf, breaking tackles. Garrett Wolf into the open field. Garrett Wolf up the sideline, knocked out inside the 30 yard line. Big run, Garrett Wolf. That's what this offense needed a bit of a spark. Garrett Wolf once again with great vision. Just a little read play, finds a seam, bang. Gets through the hole, and then he has the speed to get outside. Watch him get around Stephen Lewis right there. Ducks his shoulder, good form ball on the outside arm. Getting some good work up front from his front five, George Daglas, Brian Van Acker. Getting some help from his wide receivers, and then again the speed to get to the edge. And they'll say he stepped out at the 31-yard line. First down, Horvath. Barking out signals. Hands again to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf turns the corner. Garrett Wolf inside the 25, knocked out at the 22-yard line. I think he needs a breather right now. Getting up slowly. Okay. I think it's time for a heavy dose of A.J. Harris. And the entire I think Northern Illinois crowd is hushed as Garrett Wolf is still down. I think he's just tired. He looked tired after the last run. Look at the vision again. Gets to the outside. And instead of going out, he takes his, his shoulders and lowers them and goes over Corey Parker. And I think at this point, he's just a little gassed. And as soon as they say Garrett Wolf is the injured Husky, a hush goes over the crowd. 
A.J. Harris is now in at tailback. Now, I just didn't see anything really that would lead me to believe as he clutches his left knee or the hand of one of the northern trainers. It really didn't look like anything drastic happens. And there's the most concerned man in the entire building. You got a youngster averages 140 yards per game on the ground and is your most explosive threat. But they're taking him, looks like they're taking him inside right off, off the field. They're not yep. even taking him to the sideline. Nope. He's walking okay, but the, you notice the right arm is being kept very close to his body. Well, he's had some shoulder problems in the past, but once again, just driving those legs. You can't tell if it's a shoulder injury or his knee, one of his knees. I'd be we'll silly try to get speculate. You a report. It does look like he's limping, though. A.J. Harris, single back set now. He'll take the handoff. A.J. Harris. This one's coming back. As though. flags fly, takes it inside the 10 yard line. I think they may be throwing a flag Doug Freeze way. That would be the second penalty on Doug today. Holding on the offense, number 62. That's it. Yard penalty. Holding on Doug down. Free. 22 for 161 and a touch for Garrett Wolf today. These negative plays just drive you crazy. Once again, you see Doug Free's hands just are outside his pads. He's got the Michigan, Eastern Michigan defender wrapped up in a chokehold. You're not going to get away with it. The Northern coaches compare this young man to Ryan Deem, who's the great offensive lineman for the Indianapolis Colts, and everyone has him projected as a future first rounder, just a great athlete at 6'7 and 302. Got a lot of football left ahead of him. Horvath fakes. Looks, rolls, throws, finds Nordine, the tight end. Knocked down at the 26, 27 yard line. Yeah, well designed play there. Just a little bit nervous when I see that receiver. It's an effort play stretching that ball out. But before that knee goes down, you'll see it at the end of this play. Again, Nordine comes in and fakes the, 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 the chop down block. And you'll see him here reaching the ball out. Be careful. Look, like he almost came loose. Yeah, they do a good job running that kind of smash play where the tight end comes in in motion. That time they slipped him out in, in a route. Horvath looks, goes downfield, and has his man. Sam Hurd makes the catch, but it will be short, I believe. It's going to be close. We'll see where they spot this. Very close. Again, they've done a nice job throwing these curl routes today, and because of the conditions, They've really taken a lot of the risk out of the passing game. Good route. Sam Hurd does a nice job getting down underneath that ball, getting his hands underneath the ball. That young man is a tremendous football player. Did he make it? I don't believe so. I believe he's short. If he didn't, do you go for it, Tim? Why not? You run the football for 212 yards per Saturday. Line it up. Your front five are bigger, stronger. You've got way too much wind out there that can affect a sophomore kicker. Run the football out. That's exactly what they're doing. And what does Eastern Michigan have? 105 yards of offense all day? Take a look at Horvath's numbers. 12 for 20, 78 yards. Tr folks, this kid can flat out throw. Been picked twice, but the conditions today, very tough with the wind. They've Not got their best big afternoon. Their big back, A.J. Harris, is the man in. Single back set, Horvath keeps. And he's got and it. And he's got it. First down, Northern Illinois moved the chains. I think it's obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, the right decision, but I don't think they thought very long about this. You got a decisive advantage up front with your offensive line versus their defensive line. You see Phil without his helmet right now. I want to tell that young man, he's a little excited. The helmet's an important part of the uh, He's barking the gear. at the Eastern Michigan lineman. I don't think he's real happy with somebody. Well, he just had a little head-to-head -head contact. If someone ripped his helmet off. I wouldn't be real happy either. There's some nasty things that go on at the bottom of those piles. And Doug Free on top again trying to protect his quarterback. Tell you what, you go into battle, you want a guy like Doug Free on your side. No question. Wow. A tremendous player with a lot of heart. Horvath fakes, keeps, looks, looks, 
keeps it and runs out of bounds right around the call it the 15 yard line. Good decision. Earlier I talked about he had an opportunity to run and he decided to throw this time. Play action pass nobody's open and does the right thing tucks it makes a positive play out of nothing and then then chirps at one of the Eastern Michigan defenders. I don't like quarterbacks with a little bit of a chip on their little edge. shoulder. Absolutely. Is Doug Free at left tackle in the National Football League? No question. He's a first round draft pick when he decides to call it quits at the collegiate level. AJ Harris finds a hole, picks his way short of the 10 yard line, right around the 11 or 12 yard line. He's got a lot of room talking about Doug Free. He's got a lot of room to put some extra weight on, too. Was a former tight end, a great athlete. The guy, once he spends a few more winners in the weight room and gets that added strength that you need to play on Sundays, I think he'll be just fine. There's sure, a young he's man that's going to get a chance as well. AJ Harris. The way things have changed, Tom. Folks, they used to say William Perry was a freak at 315 pounds, 320. Everyone's that size. And now Doug Free, you're saying, has room to grow at 302. AJ Harris should have enough for a Northern Illinois first down. It'll be close, but I believe he's got it. There's 10, 10 guys on the each NFL team. The size of this team. guy. 6'7", 302. He looks thin. Look at him. He does. He looks like he's in shape. Absolutely. NFL team's going to have him at 340, 330. 325, probably. You don't want him to lose his athleticism. But he's a tremendous player. I, the whole offensive line's fantastic. Brian Van Acker can play for me any day of the week. Senior center is just a great football player. And I believe Jake Ball Ebenog. On the offense, number 58. 58. Excuse Five me, George Daglas. A little flinch. You work so hard to get inside the 10, and you just hate to see those penalties. You see a disgusted Coach Novak once again. The Pittman Protection Unit is what they call the O-line here in DeKalb. Horvat hands, A.J. Harris. AJ Knocked Harris. down around the 12. Well, I think if Phil comes up to the line of scrimmage here and sees an Eastern Michael Michigan Richardson cornerback crowding Sam Hurd, you may see him throw the alley-oop to him. Looks like A.J. Harris a little banged up now yep. as well. He Adrian does. Harris would be the next guy in line to come in, and he's Number an accomplished 39. player as well. Now, if you see some press coverage out here, especially at the top of your screen, if Stephen Lewis decides to come up and press Sam Hurd, which I don't advise, I think you may see him throw it to him. Horvath looking, looking, fires. Yep. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Give him six. Chateau Powers. What a tremendous catch. Thrown it to his back shoulder. That was a heck of a throw. That too. was. It was a heck Stick of a that catch. In there. It's a heck of a drive. It's something that they truly needed after stalling for the first 14 plus minutes of the half, or excuse me, of the quarter. Horvath, you see him. Woo, finally. We do have a flag on the play. A little unsportsmanlike conduct, conduct maybe. I believe it's the touchdown's going to stand. They're just going to make Chris Nenda kick it from midfield, or actually maybe dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense number 83. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The touchdown is good. Well, a couple of bad penalties today, but again, the touchdown is a huge. Huge thing for this northern offense that has struggled this half. Extra point is good, 21-6. Uh, A.J. Harris, as we were saying, looked like he was banged up a bit. And there he is being worked on on the northern Illinois sideline. You can tell he looks like he's okay, just maybe a bit gassed. Having trouble catching his breath. But Adrian Davis would be the man who would replace him, who's just five foot five. Yeah, check out the, the throwing... The touchdown catch, Phil Horvath throws it to the inside shoulder. Chateau Power makes a 
very good move coming back to the ball. A very good throw as well. Throws it where only the northern receiver can catch it, and then Chaton gets up and decides to hand it to one of the eastern Michigan defenders, and I think that's what cost them the 15 yards on the kickoff. I think you're seeing a northern offense is a little bit frustrated right now. You've had some they, silly penalties. Well, I think they felt they had opportunities to explode. No question. Get it done. No question. And it happens. I mean, as we said earlier, they're coming off a huge win over Miami. This is what this is a team that they should really take care of. And second quarter and third day, most of the third quarter offensively, they've just struggled. But again, defensively, they've had a heck of a showing, and that's the area of this football team that really needed to improve. And I think that Joe Novak and his coaching staff have to be excited about the way that defense is playing. And let's not overlook the fact, Tom, that they had to work that entire drive into the win. That's correct. The kick will come down right around the 20-yard line. And Eastern Michigan's going to have excellent, excellent field position to get started. Stephen Lewis brings it back out to the 45 yard line. Our North Aurora Auto Mall scoring drive, 11 plays, 65 yards. It took 422 to complete. Chatone Powers finds pay dirt on a pass from Phil Horvath, 12 yards on the TD catch. And they really regain the momentum in this ball game. Huskies a 21 to six lead right now. Bonet is back in at quarterback. They have alternated quarterbacks consistently today. Matt Bonet, number 11, is in. And he is looking, looking, going down the field, and it's nearly intercepted. Should have been picked. Boy. Nearly picked. Hansborough almost had his second of the day. He got his first of his career about a half hour ago. He nearly had number two. What a rough day for Matt Bonet. He's got all the time in the world to throw and just throws it right to number 11, Alva Hansbro. Just a poor decision by the Eastern quarterback. Goes into double coverage. Second and 10. They, would, they play press coverage more than on DeLorean, number 19, and he has not been a factor in this game today at all. Dump it off to Connor. The quarter ends. The ball sits at midfield. We'll have a third and five coming up. When we come back, Huskies by 15. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. VCB is the official site for NIU athletics. Featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU athletics, the Village Commons bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll-free 800-700-4868 or on the web at www.vcb. Hey Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at niubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Gansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Before the game, you can shop at either of our two locations, the Home Student Center or the Alumni Shop at the NIU Convocation Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear, selection, and prices, stop by today or shop at home. niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. She's over there. As you can see, Comcast High Speed Internet is way faster than DSL and dial -up. And for a limited time, you can get six months of service for just $19.99 a month. To order, call 1-888-COMCAST or visit your local retailer. Availability. Phil Horvath having a very tough day dealing with the wind conditions, but he really looked good on this drive. Completed passes. To a couple of different receivers. Also, as you see there, runs the ball, gets it down into the red zone, and then finds his man in the end zone. Chaton Powers, he comes over, and that's what the flag was for, I believe. Corvass going over to taunt he was just a couple making, of Eastern Michigan defensive backs. He back. was making peace. I saw no taunting there. 
Let's go down to the field, Casey Kaler. Talking about Phil Horvath, NIU offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach John Bond equates Horvath to Cubs pitcher Greg Maddox. Like Maddox, Horvath doesn't have the big arm, but says Bond he can make all the pitches and has great control. He says he's unbelievably coachable, very unselfish, and Horvath has got a little Bill Belichick in him, perhaps. He spends, on average, of about four to five extra hours a week in film study getting ready for these Saturday afternoons. Pass is knocked away. Thank you, Casey. We still do not have a report yet on, on Garrett Wolf. Take a look at the statistical breakdown through three quarters. Northern Illinois completely dominating this football game. Except on the scoreboard. That's right. Where they have a comfortable lead, but you would think with a better than 200-yard advantage that the score would be a little different than 21 to 6. Well, we've talked about the win, but there's no question they've shot themselves in the foot several times today with penalties, penalties or turnovers. A drop snap on a punt. Eastern Michigan will punt this one away. Another low line drive kick into the wind, and it'll roll down, and Northern will start at their own 11-yard line. Jim Phillips, the outstanding athletic director at Northern Illinois, is with us. And the man of sartorial splendor. How are you? <laughs> Great, guys. How are you? Good. Interesting we gotta get a day today. It is. We got to get a few more points. And as you guys, uh, you can't um, you can't win them all pretty. But, I you know, know. I know. I mean, they all can't be 40 point wins where everyone looks great. A win is a win is a win, right? You're right, but you guys have been in enough locker rooms. That coach across the sidelines oh, is not going to be very happy as you look at him on the screen with the turnovers and the penalties. He'll be the first one to get after our guys. Well, it is a very young Northern Illinois football team, younger than the last three or four that Joe's coached, so. A.J. Harris turns the corner. A.J. Harris breaks tackles. Flag comes flying. Well, that's a late flag. We'll see what the penalty is, but another solid run from A.J. Harris. He had his pads off between possessions. On the offense, another three, Northern three, Illinois ten penalty. holding penalty. Replay first down. Did they get Chatone Powers that on the sound, hole? Sounds like they did. We'll take a look at it again. again. You get good push up front from the offensive line. For an injury. A.J. Harris. And there's the hole. Yep. You, you can Chateau see it. Powers. Had him by the jersey. No question. You know, Jim, you Doesn't have... really look like it was necessary either because A.J. had some running room, but this one's coming back. No question about the penalty. You have been working very hard on what you call the Academic and Athletic Performance Center. In fact, there's a sign down at the end of the field that said, let's make this dream a reality. Tell us a little bit about how progress is going on that. Progress is great. It's a $9.5 million uh, building. We're about $400,000 short of our goal. And as you see it on there, a, a strength and conditioning center, a sports medicine and rehabilitation center, um, a huge academic center, meeting room, coaches room, locker room, Everything that our kids need, all 469 of them will need on a day-to-day -day basis. So, I, have to, I have to believe there is nothing like that that rivals that in the match. Yeah, we'll, we, we will go right to the top, I think, once we put a shovel in the ground and, and, and build this thing. And when do you expect to be able to do that? As soon as we raise the last $400,000. So that's got my total focus and the staff's total focus because you got a chance to uh, truly make a difference and in I, the lives of our kids. I have to interrupt, but I believe we're going to have a safety called here. It's going to be very close. I think it's going to be an intentional grounding in the end zone. Intentional grounding on the offense number three. The result of the play is safety. So that will give some life to Eastern Michigan here in the fourth quarter. 21 to 8 will become the score, and they'll get the football back. Take a look again at the play, Tommy. Yeah, once again, Phil Horvath's got some time. Got to get rid of the football, and if not, Make sure you're not in the end zone when you just throw it out of bounds. That's a great call by the official. Horvath very upset on the sideline, but that was a real solid play. Well, Phil hasn't had a great day today. I mean, he's an excellent quarterback. He's still learning. I believe this is just his ninth start of his career, and you see Joe Novak talking to him. I think it was Jason Jones, the man who got the pressure for Eastern Michigan. I mean, you learn these things as you get older and you, you get more and more reps but it, I just like to see what Joe just did there he obviously had some words for his quarterback but he knows Phil's got to go back out there and continue to play so getting in his face and tearing him down from a confidence standpoint does no good so no it's funny to hear you say that okay but Phil's not cashing a check like you, Jim Harbaugh did right. 
when Mike Ditka was yelling at him, all right? We, we, did you ever have Mike yell at you? Oh, no question. But again, I was getting paid. Phil is a student athlete. He's got a, you know, he's still young. He's learning. There's I got, a difference. I got I to gotta go with Tommy big time on that. He, he cannot crush that kid on the side. No, you can't. I can't. completely agree with yeah. you. He, he's got to he's got to put it into a teaching moment, which he did, and that's why Joe is such a tremendous coach. Yeah, I agree. By the way, Jimmy, a new alumni center opened today, didn't it? It did. Uh, Barcima Alumni Visitor Center, state of the art uh, uh, facility. That will be kind of the, the, the first thing that people look at when they come to campus and, and our alums come back, and, and a great meeting place for uh, a lot of generations in the past and in the future. Take a look at the brand new building. And there is a shot of it. It opened today. It did open today, and there's all types of uh, uh, things w within it. It's certainly uh, the first opportunity for prospective student athletes to come in and get a feel for the campus, get their map, get their bearings of where to go next. Uh, several big conference rooms. We hope the community of DeKalb and Sycamore use it as well. Some entertainment spots, you know, as well as some great meeting areas for alumni events you know, different classes that come back from year to year. And I'm told it's an exact replica of Kaplan's house in the northern suburbs of Chicago. <laughs> well, Hollis Thomas was saying he's on the sidelines today. The Eagles have a bye week. And he said, I got lost in DeKalb. I can't believe all the things that are going on. He said, I've never seen the facility look so outstanding. He was thrilled. Yeah, it, when you have guys that haven't been back in a while, they are amazed. Because you look at the Barcima Alumni Visitor Center, which you showed, New Barcima uh, College of Business, $22 million building, building, $42 million convocation center for basketball and volleyball and wrestling. So there have been a lot of changes to the, uh, we're watching this run here, but a lot of changes to the campus. A.J. Bennett catches the pass as Eastern Michigan trails by 13 after the safety of Phil Horvath. They've done a pretty good job, Tommy, of alternating quarterbacks, yet finding a way to incorporate both into the system. Yeah, they have. They're doing a nice job getting the ball to different players. I believe that Martin Wilson's down on the play. Martin Wilson, yep, the Husky defensive lineman, defensive tackle is out. But again, yeah, I mean, if you continue to, to allow a team to hang around, as the Huskies have allowed the Eagles to hang around today, they become confident. You've got a good established quarterback like Matt, Matt Bonet, although he's a bit injured, still able to make some plays. Now, instant replay is being used as an experiment by the league. Explain to the philosophy behind all this. Well, I think it, it's almost become common practice. I think fans expect it now. Coaches certainly expect it. We've modeled ourselves after the Big Ten, and it's um, it's not a coach's challenge. They can't throw a flag on. It's got to be precipitated by the folks up in the booth, and they have to say that, hey, let's take a look at it. They they, they you know, ring a bell down to that official down on the field, and then they determine what you know what has happened. Would you like to see it where a coach could challenge? Maybe, maybe. Uh, you know, I guess I haven't probably studied it far enough to, to, to say yes or no on it. But in the end, I think we'd all agree, you want to get the call right. I agree. Kids deserve it. You have the technology, use it. Use it, exactly. Now, what will they do on games that are not televised? That's, that's the complication. And uh, what we found in the MAC is everybody's doing some kind of in-house broadcast, whether it's a replay board or a student television so center there's, on there's some center. angle you can get. Absolutely. Now, Jim, I got to congratulate you because you have not been in DeKalb a long time, but man, have you made an imprint on this whole Thanks. program. Now, just remember, you're not completely objective to Cap, <laughs> but I appreciate those thoughts. I really do. We've worked hard. It's been a team effort. We have serious momentum in a lot of things we're doing, but we still have work to do, which I'm excited about. And I know you've added to your staff. You brought Glenn Krapika in, who was, I actually used to live with Glenn many, many years ago. He was running the Independence Bowl. And you have Andrew Herring who just joined your staff. I'm really excited about those additions that you mentioned. Big sack there by the Huskies. But you talk about a guy like Glenn Krapika, 11 years as the executive director of the Independence Bowl, worked at NIU, worked at Ohio State, worked in the private sector. Here's a guy that's got, got some whiskers to him. He's got some experience. Yep, tremendous and, content. It's been tremendous for me. A guy like Andrew Herring's been all over the place, and most recently at UIC, he's going to be a great addition. But I'm really proud also about those guys, but we have some great coaches. You had Carol Owens on at halftime, 10 years at Notre Dame, associate head coach. You have uh, Marcy Miller, who's playing for the U.S. national team this weekend, women's soccer coach. 
she is one of the top 22 young women in the country that's coaching and playing at the same time. So what a great role model for our kids. Well, the Quince Holman got the sack as we were talking with Jim Phillips, the fine athletic director here at Northern Illinois. But I'll tell you a guy who has really impressed me today, and he wasn't even listed top two on the depth chart, Craig Rush has stepped up today. Tom and I have really been well, impressed with his impact you, on this game. You know what it does? I think, as you see, uh, Ray Smith step in front of Eric Delorier to make a nice defensive play right there. But I think what it does is speaks to the great job that Joe Novak and his staff has they have done to improve the talent level over the course of the right. year. If he's they have third yeah. on the depth chart right. of his position. That tells you how good this program is. Big play. Big third play. and 13. Ball sits at the 49. Bonet looks. He's got time. He goes down the field and he finds Delorier. That is his first catch, I believe, of the day. And a timely one. This is a guy Northern has pressed him all day long and he has not been able to get free. And he makes a big catch at the 32-yard line. A good, solid throw by Bonet. And there's the catch with four red shirts around him. Yeah, just a deep in route. He gets past the first down marker. As you say, a good throw and a good catch. Starts up front. Bonet with good time to throw the ball. That's a tough third down conversion, third and 12. Now, while they've alternated quarterbacks a lot, they've given Bonet this entire set. And there's a flag on the play, and that play goes nowhere. I think you're going to get a hold on 58, Kevin Miner of that Eastern Michigan front five. Holding on the offense, number 63, the 10-yard penalty. Or his first line down. mate, Khalid Walton. I think you could have called it on Miner as well. Yeah, as Rush five. was getting some penetration. Okay. Ten yards does your flag. You know, with Tim McCarthy out, Tommy, Keenan Blaylark has really stepped his play up today. Well, and Josh Allen. Linebacker spot. Out, Josh Allen has stepped up and taken Blaylark's spot at the weak side linebacker, and he's made several plays uh, as a youngster today as well. First and 20. Clock dripping toward 11 minutes here. Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. On homecoming Saturday, Connor takes the screen pass, turns up field. Blaylark drags him down from behind. That's another good hustle play from Keenan Blaylark. Just who we were talking about. Take a look here. Yep. Tommy, they do a real nice job, Northern Illinois, at reading this. Yep, look at that. He gets blocked and just fights his way off. The, of that's it. exactly right. Hustles down the line. Adriel Again. Hansbrough was the other man in on the tackle. A very young defense, four or five, two true freshmen playing over the course of this year so far. So these guys will get better as the season rolls on. Second and 11. Matt Bonet was the sixth ranked quarterback of total offense in the country last year. He looks, he throws, he finds his man. And he's knocked out of bounds, Dwan Bracey who plays both ways, quarterback and wide receiver, number four, makes the catch and knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line. It'll bring up a third and a makeable, third and three. I think you're still in four-down territory here. Ten minutes to go. See Bracey. It's physical on the sidelines over there. Yes, it is. And that one goes nowhere for Connor. They tried to run inside, and Northern Illinois snuffed it out. It'll be interesting to see what, Co what Coach Jeff Janik decides to do. Uh, Deion Smith, I think, was the guy that blew this play up. And I believe they're going to go for it. Jim Phillips, the athletic director, is with us. What a great crowd today. I mean, and everybody's in red. It's, it's outstanding it's to see. It's become quite a tradition, It's yeah. tremendous to see. All right. Everybody big play to their now. feet. We need to stop. The Thunder Sticks, I feel like we're the Angels game. <laughs> Bonet throws, and Delorier makes one heck of a catch. Uh, Tip your cap. Great that's catch. a great catch, great catch, and that's a first down. It's just a young man making a play right there. As you said, for three quarters, he was held without a catch, and right here, just a quick slant. Not a great throw, and Delorier turns his body around and makes the catch in front of Hansbrough. Absolutely. It's a big catch on a fourth down. A 
206. That's a big body to move around like that. Hand off the cutter, up the middle, knocked down. They have got to the 17. Clock now under nine minutes to go here in DeKalb, Illinois. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle with you. This is by far the best this Eastern Michigan offense has looked today. Just a little misdirection run. A little trap. Sniffed out pretty well. Eric Pittman with the tackle stands up. Tim Connor. Jeff Jenick, who we talked about early in the game, formerly an assistant at Northwestern. The Huskies played earlier this year had a very tough loss there by one. Knocked out of bounds. Lewis makes the catch, and the ball will be spotted at the 13-yard line. It looks like Bonet is starting to find a little bit of a rhythm here. Travis Lewis, five or six-yard pickup. Once again, they find themselves in a very manageable third-down situation, although they are in four-down territory with eight and a half minutes to go. Got to be. Bonet with Connor, his single back set. Husky defense has been on the field a long time this drive. Bonet looks, throws, finds his man. Yes, it's Travis Lewis again. Another outstanding catch. Alba Hansbro right there. Somehow, Travis Lewis comes up with the catch. Huskies opened the season at Michigan. Lost 33-17. Lost when they missed the two-point conversion. It's a fourth down and one here for EMU. Lost and a missed two-pointer at the end. 38-37 to Northwestern. Pound to Tennessee Tech, lost in overtime to Akron, and then beat Miami of Ohio. Garrett Wolf has a knee injury. He is out for the remainder of the game. Same A.J. Harris out for the remainder with a shoulder injury. There is a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout with him. 21-8 Husky, 7.43 to go in DeKalb. You must be so excited. Yeah. Actually, I've been wanting to talk to you about my life insurance. I figured you'd want to make sure it's up to date. One thing I think you should... For more than 145 years, Northwestern Mutual and its products have quietly earned a most enviable reputation. Yeah, that's a great Isn't it time you had a quiet you conversation of your own? Northwestern Mutual Financial Network, the quiet company. Have a quiet conversation of your own with the Efner Financial Group. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with Some you. Some people are happier at work than others. They're using Kyocera printers and copiers. Kyocera, brilliant color, advanced technology that's simple to use, and a low cost of ownership. They're people friendly. People friendly printers and copiers. Only from Kyocera. The whole world smiles with you. Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle with you. Jim Phillips, great athletic director here at Northern, is with us in the booth, and he's pacing. He's pacing. <laughs> and he's nervous. So. He's nervous. Yeah. You don't like that 13-point differential. I don't. I don't. Um, You'd rather be 17. <laughs> rather be 27. <laughs> He'll take I mean, whatever. I, I have no control over anything, That's but right. I, I pace terribly. Well, with... Fourth and one situation. Out of the gun, Bonet from the spread offense. He's going to the end zone. And DeLorean intercepted. Wow. And they called it incomplete. Adriel Hansbro with a major league play. That is a major league play. I believe they called it incomplete in the corner of the end zone. DeLaurier tried to go up over the top of him. DeLaurier is 6'4", 206 pounds. Well, he's certainly a mismatch. Hansbro is 5'10". Certainly a mismatch, but you got to fight for it. And Hansbro does, comes up with a big play. Little surprise, they did not decide just to run it up the middle. They had had some success running the football on this drive. But just a great play by the young man. Take a look at th this Adriel is a good Hansbrough. look here. Watch the play by Hansborough because that ball is in Delorier's hands. He's six foot four, and he knocks it out of his hands. Yeah, Outstanding play. I think they want to review this. Well, they Let's can review it every angle they want, but.
They will review it to see if it's an interception. I don't believe it's an interception. I believe they called it right on the field. It was just a, an incomplete pass. His hands bro goes up and just strips it out of Delorier's hands. I mean, Delorier never has a, a, a possession of the ball, so they're not going to suggest that this is an Eastern Michigan touchdown. What they're looking for, I'm sure, is to whether or not Hansbro caught the ball, but I don't believe he did. I think it hit the ground. So, right, you must have irrefutable evidence yeah, to overturn the call, and I don't see that call's going to stand the way it was, incomplete. That's my guess. Although you never you see, see the ball hit oh, the yeah, ground. You do. The oh, there it is. Yeah, it's yeah, on the ground that's, right yeah. there. It's an incomplete pass. Right. Yep. They got the call correct. The Huskies will take over at their own 20-yard line. 7.37 to go. This is a drive. The Huskies have shown an ability to, when they needed to run the clock down, they've gotten it done. They're going to be down to their third tailback, who does have some experience. Adrian Davis is a senior. Not the biggest guy in the world at 5'5 and 185 uh, pounds, but 62 yards rushing on the year. Does have some experience. And certainly you have a very talented offensive line. Right, if you're just joining us, Garrett Wolf has left the game with 160 plus yards and a touchdown, but dealing with a knee injury. We do not know the severity of it. And A.J. Harris, who's played very well in his stead, is out with a shoulder injury. It's a great opportunity for Adrian Davis. That's he's a right. senior, he's a great kid, he's worked hard, he's a good little football player. I wouldn't be surprised well, if he came out here and did a heck of a job. Absolutely. Well, if you think back, Jim, to a year ago, Garrett Wolf wasn't your starting running back. That's right, that's right. That's why you have to have depth. Standings in the league, Northern Illinois sits right now at one and one in the Mid-American Conference. Eastern Michigan, two and After one. Review, the play stands is called on the field. It's an incomplete pass. First down, Northern Illinois. Now we noticed that Temple will be playing as part of the MAC in football. 2007, Temple joins us, and uh, we're excited about that. Um, it brings the number three television market in the country. Uh, in, in Philadelphia and that region. So I think that'll be great. And then I think over a period of time, I wouldn't be surprised if there was maybe some movement, whether it's Temple in all sports or some other sports, etc. So we're certainly excited about them joining the conference. Great addition to the league. Phil Horvath, Ducks under center. They're going to spot it at the 10 yard line. Adrian Davis, as we talked about, just five foot five, Tommy. That's Very, a small guy at tailback. Say, difficult to see him behind that big offensive line. And they're just, I mean, you have Phil Horvath, who's very good at managing this offense. He'll, he'll work this play clock down as much as he can, probably snap it with three or four seconds left. Just try to grind out a couple of first downs, put this one away. And Northern Illinois has shown an ability to do that over the last few years with their running game. Adrian Davis crashes across the 15, out to the 17. Let's take a look at the updated Mid-American Conference standings that include today's games that have already gone final. This is such a big game for us because it's a swing game. Eastern Michigan's 2-1, and one. we're 1-1, one and one. so you get a chance to jump them. There you see the standings. Toledo sits 5-1, and one, a big road win today. Blew out Ball State and Muncie. And there's Bowling Green, a winner today at Buffalo. And they are 3-0 in the league, 4-2 and two overall. Adrian Davis. There he goes. Up the first down and a lot more. And a veteran move from a senior instead of going out of bounds. Cuts it, it back to the middle of the field and it stays the in bounds. clock moving. Absolutely. They'll stop the clock to set the ball for the first down and then wind the clock as we drip toward the six minute mark. Great job. Gave a bit of a hesitation as he went around the left yep. end, let his blocking catch up, and then bam, take it up the sideline. I love seeing Brian Van Acker, a very athletic center, lead plays too. Well, we you know how hard that? it is to snap the ball and then get out in front of a back with a tremendous amount of speed. Well, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, Jimmy. You guys have a center in Van Acker who is more mobile than most centers in college football. How about that seal right there to open the outside? Great play. And again, a smart, 
smart decision to stay in bounds. Yep, they snap it with two seconds left on the clock, play clock, and Adrian Davis crashes down to the 40. 45 yard line we'll running with spotted. purpose but also running with security both hands wrapped tightly around that football right now so you never know when your moment Jim of opportunity is going to come you never know you're standing over there as the number three back and all of a sudden bam you're in with the game on the line right. and I think what Tommy alluded to is exactly correct that's why you have depth you continue yep. to recruit you continue to motivate and coach on a weekly basis on a daily basis in practice because you never know when your number is going to be called I think the fact that, that Joe has put together so many consecutive winning seasons sitting at five right now, and the fact that you've got a ton of players in the National Football League, and the fact that the depth has improved, I think when you put it all together, you really see how good a job Joe Novak has done here in DeKalb. No question about it. He is um, he's terrific. He's been a great mentor for these kids, a great leader, and the product on the field, I think, uh, reflects that pretty well and when you can have a third string tailback and again that doesn't speak negatively about Adrian Harris's ability because the two kids in front of him are excellent football players but when you can go to your third string tailback and feel very confident and comfortable with him to get some first downs in a key situation while wow, it does speak to the depth that you have in your program Horvath hands off Adrian Davis and this time it's going nowhere that one will be a loss of about three, maybe two, if he gets a kind spot. But the clock will continue to run. Things looking like they're going the Huskies' way with a 13-point lead and 4.20 to go. And look at the big offensive lineman and Jake Nordine, the tight end, still trying to find some running lanes for Adrian Davis. Again, just milking the clock. If you're just joining us, Garrett Wolf and A.J. Harris, both out of the game with injuries. Wolf to his knee and Harris to his shoulder. We do not know the severity of those injuries. Play clock uh, is going to be to zero, and I believe we have a flag with a delay of game. That's the dangerous thing when you try and run the clock so far down, you don't always get your signal straight. Surprised me a little bit because Phil is really good at clock management. Last uh, Wednesday night when we played Miami, in that last drive of the game, yep. I'm telling you, there were eight to ten possessions where he had that thing between one and zero and snapped it. So that, that kind of surprised me a little bit. Well, they did such a great job as an offense to drive that, that ball down the field in the last few moments to kick that field goal that kind of secured things. Horvath looks, throws, finds his man, Chatone Powers. Horvath Powers will get the ball out. Spotted at the 48-yard line. He stays in bounds as well. Clock down near 3.30 now as we take a look at this play, Tom. And a long third down, third and 12. Chatone Powers does a nice job securing the ball. I don't know if he... Tried to stay in bounds. It was just kept in bounds by the Eastern defense, but the clock is rolling. That's all that counts. Horvath looking, puts it up, finds his man Sam Hurd, and Hurd breaks away, and Hurd has a first down. Northern Illinois at the EMU 34. That one is a big one. Wow. Great throw, great catch. And you'll see at the end of this play, Dewan Bracey tries to strip this ball from Sam Hurd. Good throw, just a hook route again. You'll see Bracey tries to rip it out of there, and Sam Hurd at 6'4 and 194. There's no chance, my a friend. A strong young man, again, sits down, comes back to the football. And once again, you see why he is such a smart ball player. Instead of coming and keep running back to the to the quarterback, yes, he secures the catch, but then turns right up and gets the first down. And of Adrian Davis up the middle. Another Husky first down, and it's inside the 20. Clock at 2.39. By far the most impressive drive of the afternoon for the Husky offense. Just when they needed it, Jim Phillips, the athletic director, is with us. We talked about this when the drive started. you got to be able to put people away here. You do, and, and uh, as we discussed, a senior running back, he's had some carries in the past, and he's got some maturity to him. So, again, I'm not, I'm not overly surprised at this. 
Northern Illinois today has carried the ball as a team 49 times for 310 yards. That's getting it done on the ground. Horvat hands. Adrian Davis up the middle inside the 10-yard line. I think that the, the Husky offensive line is completely wearing out that Eagle front four right now. There's some lanes that you, David Kaplan, could run through. <laughs> ben Lewick just doing a great job. And Adrian Davis almost loses his helmet. Again, running the ball hard and controlling it, holding on tight. This has been an outstanding drive. Cap, you got any response to that hole that uh, Tommy alluded to? He knows he I'm told me to earlier church. that I couldn't get through any hole. Well, that tells you how wide that one was. Horvat to Adrian Davis. This place stopped up. Davis, the ball carrier. But the clock now dripping toward 120. Jim Phillips, thank you for coming up and hanging with us a little Thanks, bit today. David. We will see you in a couple Tommy, weeks. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. There is a timeout on the field. Huskies 21-8 with 121 to go. Be right back at Comcast Sports Next. Career stalled? Get on the fast track with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. NIU provides an AACSB accredited MBA at convenient locations and within your budget. Choose from the flexible evening MBA, Saturday executive MBA, or one-year professional MBA that lets you balance the demands of home and work. Take the NIU challenge and jumpstart your career. Call 1-866-NIU-MBA-1. That's 1-866-NIU. One, two, yo. Competition is cool, but I'll be It's only live work like on demand with Comcast Digital Cable. It's TV I control. <laughs> Play, stop, fast forward, rewind, or pause. Oh, that was good. Crime happens, sometimes leaving victims to fend for themselves, and too often the criminals go free. You can help. Train online for a career as a victim's advocate, law enforcement officer, crime scene investigator, and more. Crime will never stop happening, but you can help slow it down. Call Westwood College online. Call toll-free 800-893-0250. That's 800-893-0250. Call now. 121 to go here in DeKalb, Illinois. The lights are on. And the Huskies trying to put Eastern Michigan away. They've let the Eagles stay in this ballgame, and the Eagles defensively have done a really solid job today, although this last drive has broken their back. Horvat hands. Adrian Davis will not be able to pick up a Husky first down. He's knocked down at the 10-yard line, and it'll bring up a fourth down situation. Time Another timeout for Eastern Michigan. We'll see what the Huskies choose to do. Probably a field goal for Nendick when we come back. Comcast for Wow, just look at this huge auto mall right here at I-88 in Orchard Road. It's the North Aurora Auto Mall. Now, I believe it's the largest automotive discount center in Chicagoland. Seven huge dealerships right at I-88 in Orchard Road. What a selection. Over 3,000 cars, trucks, and vans. And low discount prices every day. What a great location right here at I-88 in Orchard Road. The North Aurora Auto Mall. Exit Orchard Road off I-88. What makes a butter burger better? Well, it's cooked up fresh and made to order. So good. Mm. Hot and juicy. Tasty. Rush right to you. So good. You can taste how much we care. Oh, that's luscious. So good. Lightly buttered. Tasty. Toasted bun. So good. Bigger, better butter burger. Colors. Taste how much we care. Minute 13 to go into Cal. Chris Nendick is on to try and give the Huskies a 16-point lead. Yeah, Eastern Michigan is delaying the inevitable at this point. Right. It would look to be at 16 points, insurmountable, but at least from a Joe Novak perspective, that would give you a two-score and two two-point conversion lead. That is correct. 
out of the hole to Phil Horvath. Snap, set, kick. Perfect. 24-8. Northern Illinois, 109 to go. Huskies will kick it away. We'll play the final 109 after this at Comcast Sportsnet. You know, with most wireless companies, you don't just get charged for calls you make on your cell phone. You also get charged for calls you receive. Did you just make that face? That, huh? You mean get off. What? I didn't know that face. Well, at U.S. Cellular, you don't get charged for incoming calls. Did you just make that other face that... I think I'm going to switch face. With unlimited call me minutes, there's no charge for incoming calls. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Right now, get unlimited local call me minutes on plans $39.95 and higher. Comcast Sportsnet's coverage of Northern Illinois Husky football brought to you by U.S. Cellular. We connect with you. Culver's frozen custard and butter burgers. America's favorite made fresh. Village Commons Bookstore. For all your Husky clothing and souvenirs, visit vcbs.com. Applebee's. Try Applebee's. Car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. Casey's General Stores, the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's, a convenience store, and a whole lot more. The North Aurora Auto Mall, I-88 and Orchard Road. The NIU MBA programs, take the NIU MBA Challenge. The NIU Alumni Association, stay connected with NIU. And by Kishwaukee Hospital. Chris Nendick bangs through the field goal to give the Huskies a 16-point lead with 109 to go. There's the high, deep driving kick, and it's through the, or towards the back of the end zone, and that will be a touchback, and Eastern Michigan will take it at their own 20. Husky scoring drive, Nendek, a 27-yard field goal after a 13-play drive that covered 79 yards and took 628 off the clock. It was that is putting someone away. That's the best drive of the day, and they did it with their third-string tailback. Adrian Davis stepped in after A.J. Harris went out, after Garrett Wolf went out. Adrian Davis showed you he's a little stallion, Tommy. You ride your stallions. They've got a stable of them in the Northern Illinois backfield. Bonet is going to go down, and he fumbles the football. Northern Illinois has got it. Kenny West fumbles the football. <laughs> and now I think Northern's got it, and that will do it today. That will put Eastern Michigan away. Yes, the Huskies have Get the football. With the it's like Alva Hansby comes up with this one. Or maybe Kenny West got it back. Either way, it looks like it's a Kenny Husky West football. smelled end zone. He was trying to run with it. You'll see Bonet here. He stripped again, by Craig Rush. Who's played a great game. Tremendous. Coach Novak, give him a game ball. He's played great. Kenny West picks it up, tries to get to the end zone, and fumbles. And then Hansborough, I believe, is the man that got it back. Alva Hansborough, I believe, recovered the kick. Or the fumble. Or, excuse me, fumble. There's four Huskies around it. Someone's going to come up with it. Horvath hands Adrian Davis. He's knocked down immediately at the 10 or just oh, inside the 10. Davis. Clock ticking Jeffrey down, and out. Eastern Michigan's out of timeouts. One more snap. Huskies will take a knee, and that'll do it. What well, hasn't been pretty today. It has not been pretty. And I think the story of the day is the fact that Joe no Novak has watched both of his star tailbacks go down. We have no word yet on how severe the injuries are to Garrett Wolf and to A.J. Harris, but to see them both go off the field cannot be very comforting to no, Joe Novak and his staff. Just dialing around and just stopping at our game now, Garrett Wolf, the star tailback, 161 yards and a touch today. But he injured his knee. We do not know the severity. Adrian and he Davis. is not able to come back here and play in the fourth quarter. Clock ticks Jackson down. A.J. Harris out with a shoulder injury after a great job filling in for Garrett Wolf. But this one's come to an end. The Northern Illinois Huskies, they fire the cannons down in the north end zone. And they have beaten Eastern Michigan 24-8 the final here today.
Huskies, the next home game will be against Ball State. We coming back for that one? We'll be here. We will. We'll be back. I'm going to dress a little warmer for this one. Yeah, I was a little chill today. We're both getting old and a little soft as we get old. Happy homecoming crowd here. Seventh straight homecoming win, correct? That's right, and we have never lost. That is right. Doing a Northern you Illinois just game. don't jinx us, all right? So hopefully we can continue that streak. We are now handling the Casey's postgame show. We're going to take it down to the field for Casey's coach's comment as soon as we get Joe Novak with our own Casey, Casey Kaler. We'll get it to him as soon as he's able to corral Coach Joe Novak who I, I would think is going to be disappointed Happ watching the film. That's right. Happy with a win because they all can't be pretty, as we were talking to Jim Phillips about, but disappointed in some of the undisciplined play and also a little bit nervous as to what the condition of his top two tailbacks are. Exactly. And you see Jim Phillips down on the field congratulating Adrian Davis and stepping in and doing a great job. Stepped up and made the plays when he had to, and Joe Novak's with our Casey. All right, thank you very much, Cap. Uh, indeed, Coach Novak, congratulations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good to have it over. <laughs> Good to have it over. It was 14 nothing and a half. You end up winning at 24 to eight. Uh, what'd you think of the second half? Well, a win's a win. We didn't play very well today, and that a lot of credit goes to Eastern Michigan. I thought they played well. They're a much improved football team, but we certainly have to play a lot better. Those penalties are killing us. All right, Coach. Thanks. Okay, Casey. Head Coach Joe Novak, as we send it back upstairs. Thanks, Casey, and it's exactly what we said. We'll come back and we'll uh, put a bow on this one for you. The Huskies, 24-8 over the Eagles. It's a final. The Nissan Pathfinder has led the way for nearly two decades, and the league just got bigger. Introducing the new seven-passenger 2005 Nissan Pathfinder with more horsepower and seating for seven. See your Nissan dealer now and lease a new 2005 Pathfinder for just $3.39 a month. The Nissan Pathfinder. Everything you expect from Nissan and more. Yep, a third row. What do you value? Do you value the environment and generating clean energy from sunlight? Maybe you value advances in easy-to-use office equipment that saves time and is shaping the future of business communication. Or do you value the modern miracles that give your family better health, a better quality of life, and an instant connection to those you love? In so many things you value, Kyocera brings new value to your world. Kyocera, the new value frontier. Articat ATVs come with...